welcome to the very first game here in uh, Winnipeg. We're here at the Mustangs. Absolutely. And uh, the first game of the season. Is it the first game of the season? The first game. That's right. today's game and uh, we're looking forward to, to a spirited affair these got these two teams faced off twice last game or last season rather uh, obviously uh, and, and there was there was some a little bit of standout That's right. So this is Nyok's team, and very excited to see how he performs as the leader of this offense. For sure. He should be a whole lot more comfortable than he was last year, but uh, playing against a familiar foe, this was his only start from last year, and he did have some success. We actually watched that game not long ago, about two hours ago. Uh, I was watching some uh, some film to get some names down and whatnot. But uh, um, these two teams looking for a, a much better performance than they had last year. Obviously, Winnipeg wanting to be above 500, and... Uh, uh, Edmonton w hoping for uh, more than just the one win they had last year. Yeah, for sure. And these two teams have parallels in some senses. Jordan Wilson, head coach of the Red Bulls, entering his third season now with the team. They've gotten better every year. Last year, they almost upset the Saskatoon <laughs> semifinal. Now, obviously, Saskatoon, a perennial powerhouse, not just in the Prairie Football Conference, but in the Canadian Junior Football League, multiple time national champions. And they took uh, Saskatoon to the break last year. So yeah. Twenty years. Twenty years. So I mean, he's been around the block a couple of times for sure. But in terms of the coordinators that he has this year, this is their second season, both offensive and defensive coordinators. So it's the second year for this team to gel with those uh, coordinators and sort of get things going. And obviously, first year is always an adjustment where you're trying to learn a new system and, and do all that. But yeah. now these players have had one year with those uh, those coaches, and we'll see if that resonates on the field. We definitely will. I, I expect to see a much better performance than we saw last year, and, and much improvement. We've talked about the offensive side of the ball for Winnipeg, and they're they're going to have uh, a, basically a, a first full season with with, with uh, uh, Nyox. But uh, Donovan Hillary on the defensive side of the ball, he clogs things up in the middle, and he's going to be a disturbance all game long. That's no joke. No joke at all. Uh, very competitive OUA conference. Got some experience now with Leeds. Came back to Winnipeg. And uh, yeah, led the current football company to tackles last season. And again, he is the Rifle's emotional leader on defense. Everything they do sort of runs through him. And, and he's going to be a key player in this game and all season long for the Winnipeg Rifle's for sure. Absolutely. In, in addition to that passing attack that Winnipeg looks to uh, establish early in this one, they're going to have a very potent running, uh, running attack. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. That's right. As Brandon still have Nate Mitiago, second year player. Yeah. And the veteran Austin Klein in his fifth and final junior football league season. Now both of these players are getting the opportunity to step into the spotlight this season. The last few seasons it's been Mike Rashad and Olden Ogden that have carried the load from the That's right. And they've been a team that has relied on the run the past few seasons with those those exact players. So hopefully Mate and, and Austin can continue sort of that legacy of strong running backs that Rifles have had the past few years. And they offer two very different dynamics coming out of the backfield. Mate is more of a sort of power runner through the tackles. He's not afraid to make first contact. And right. he's very, very, very hard to bring down in space. And a very strong runner. Uh, more of a that guy you want some more of the slash and dashing type plays, but also very effective as a receiver coming out of the backfield. He's got good hands on him. Good hands on him. Great on the bubble screen for sure. And almost like a stat back in the way. Just like an Anthony Cousins with the triple 
target on okay. this situation. Yep. So pay attention for him coming out of the backfield as a receiver also as a very dangerous bet. For sure. And so uh, what would you say would be the strategies coming out to establish themselves for Winnipeg to, uh, to set the tone? What, what, are they, what do you think they're going to try and do offensively? And how do they shut down uh, on defensive side of the ball? How do they shut down uh, Edmonton? Well, honestly, they got to start with the run. You have to establish the run right off the hop. If you don't establish the run right off the hop, that RPO, that run pass option is not existing. The defense, Edmonton, they don't That's have right. to really prep for that. They can expect the run. They can stack the box. And it makes things a lot easier for their defense. So, uh, obviously, I think that Winnipeg definitely needs to do that. Matt Tay and, and Austin can certainly handle those responsibilities. But also, a little bit. That's going to be the Wildcats' strength in this game. They're led by Jaden Dalkey and Tony Savchuk in the secondary. Those are two players that are hard hitters. Yeah. Very uh, so I think that the Rifles need to really uh, make sure that they test that secondary. brother of Ryan, That's right. another St. Paul product. Middle son. Middle son, obviously, yeah. middle son, you know uh, a little bit as well, I think. Scotty, yeah, Scotty absolutely. Yeah. Scotty, Scotty Nowak's no, yeah. a good player guy. back in the day also. For sure. Uh, so, Brendan is one option they have. We've been chilling for another fifth-year player. He's got university experience, played for Larry Allison for two years. Yeah. He's another guy that they can go to in the line. So, definitely a couple of options. Fair enough. Well, we're looking forward to a spirit affair. Stay with us. We got the Rifles faithful uh, sitting in their seats right now. We thank you for joining us on the MB Sports Network. We're going to throw it to commercial break right now. We'll be right back with some more Rifles football. Thank you.
And after that route, the Canadian National Anthem were meet at center field as they always do in Canadian football. Oh, so get the coin sauce, make the decision, and uh, we'll be off to the races here. Uh, a spirited affair. We're looking forward to uh, a great game of football. And we've got some great weather, a little bit of haze in the air. But uh, for the most part, these guys are going to be enjoying uh, pretty moderate temperatures, not super hot outside. We are going to be in the lights later on. There'll be good, uh, good visibility out there on the field. The only thing that won't be the uh, the rifles. Uh, Most definitely, yeah. I went to those new uh, sort of bomber supported jerseys a couple of years ago to sort of uh, signify that partnership with uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and definitely, uh, yeah, a nice look they got for sure. Game show. Uh, Brendan Nyox at receiver, Griffin Schellingford at receiver. Really are going to lead the way in terms of the receiving core for the rifles. But they've got veterans all over the board. Obviously, we mentioned Donovan Hillary. Andrew Clark will talk about him probably quite a bit oh, yeah. during this broadcast. He's moving for safety, he played corner last year. He's been in the box, he's been in Bombers training camp for the past few seasons. Absolutely. So he's got that experience playing against the pros and definitely uh, helps me come back to the junior football level because the game certainly slows down for you. Looks like they'll switch sides. They'll be receiving, they'll be uh, driving your broadcast left to right. going to do so uh, at, at a competitive level now. Yeah, like you just mentioned, obviously, uh, Brad, you know, these are guys that play, have been playing pitch and catch for many, many, many years. They've got that chemistry. They know sort of, they know each other's looks, their reads, that sort of thing. So it's just a matter of obviously getting the ball to Brendan in this game. It sort of depends on what types of coverages the uh, Wildcats defense run. But yeah, obviously it helps to have a sibling out there and Especially when it's a receiver quarterback. We have two siblings out there for the rifles this season. Yeah, we do. Hart linebacker and Stephen Hart linebacker, uh, both from Sturgeon Heights Collegiate. So two sibling combos on the field, but obviously uh, Naya, the Nyox brothers, when you got quarterback and receiver, right. a little bit you know more natural. You're feeding yeah, the ball to the other one. A connection that could yeah. be on the stat sheet. But uh, uh, yeah, the Hart brothers looking to become the uh, the second most uh, famous uh, of the Hart brother combos from Winnipeg. Um, when it comes to uh, offense, it, go it goes through the running back, the 24 machine. Uh, that's uh, that's Mate Matianga. What uh, what can we expect from him? We can expect a power running game from Mate. He's not afraid to go in between the tackles and really take it to this Edmonton defense. Fearless running back, and again, when he's in space, he is incredibly hard to bring down. So you can just expect him to just uh, absolutely just plow through the tackles. He's an A gap, B gap type runner, but he can also uh, take stop, pit, take pitches to the outside. Very versatile, uh, and like I said, very dangerous in space for sure. Set to kick off here. Edmonton in their yellows with the blue tops, and uh, Winnipeg obviously with their black bottoms and uh, the gray with the black top of the jersey there with the blue numbers and the gold trim set to go here first game of the Winnipeg Rifles season and back to receive the kick is Andrew Ricard and Jared Hicks for the Winnipeg Rifles looks Hicks like we're going to need some assistance to hold that ball to me it's a little windy out there Hicks is a recruit from Dryden actually where he played quarterback and okay. running back and then Ricard obviously Kick off the 2008. That's Zach Putters who kicked it off there for Edmonton. 
couple of nice blocks. Winnipeg gets up to just shy of the 35 yard line. Flags fly. That was a decent return by Ricard. Uh, not a very deep kick by the Edmonton kicker. Yeah. They sure. Definitely a strong field position here for Winnipeg. your roughness on the Wildcats. Winnipeg rifle. Absolutely. Winnipeg will be starting basically midfield. Just uh, line and uh, approach. They, they approach the ball here. Um, first. Season. And again, defensively, pay attention to Evan Cochisarli for the Wildcats. He's going to be number uh, number 98, I believe, for them. But that's a solid. Mitchell with an eight-yard carry to start things. Shoots and Evan for Edmonton to really pay attention out there at that right defensive end position. That was great. That was incredible. Mitsuyango, like we talked about in the pregame, always keeps his feet moving, always like churning for extra back, yards, though. but there is a flag on the play. But you still have to admire Absolutely. that extra effort despite the flag. Yeah, completely unaware of the flag behind him and uh, was able to fight for some extra yards. Down over again, uh, a few extra yards. Didn't catch the number on that, but uh, rifle's off to a good start, but uh, sputtered here. With like, a, with a like we mentioned, Brad, uh, they're setting the tone early uh, with the run. No, there was a holding penalty on that play. Noyax in the gun calls for the ball. He's looking for Opa Ute. First punt of the 2018 season for Winnipeg in the first quarter brought to you by Super 8 Super 8 West. The first quarter sponsor. We appreciate all of our sponsors for the 2018 season here with the rifles. Towering kick, long. We're gonna get a bounce into the hands. Number eight grabs it and is thrown to the ground. Looks like the ball was able to make it out prior to being touched by a Winnipeg. Rifle and it'll be uh, it'll be first down right around the 30 yard line. That ball was kicked by Brennan Bush. He's actually the backup quarterback for the rifle. He's got quite the leg on him though. Uh, he's not going to be a bad speed. He actually wears soccer cleats that are far too small for him to get a little bit of kid. Okay, cool. yeah. Good strategy. Absolutely. It's tremendous to have a guy your team that can come in and play quarterback if you need it to be also. Mr. Versatility, yeah. yeah. Shotgun snap, play action, plays it off into the flat. Jake Withrow, Withrow with the reception, not, not a whole lot as far as the gain goes, but a positive play nonetheless, three yards, and it'll be second and seven. that continues throughout this game. Complete pass, but not enough yardage. Now it looks like a design blitz by the rifles. They had Dawson Hillary coming up the middle. Mature cow coming off of that left defensive end spot. Got to uh, go back on that one and forced uh, Justin Swedish to throw it a little bit of that first down mark and that's going to set up third down for the Wildcats. Again, back to receive this kick. Two players for the right foot. A couple of quick two and outs here. Two, yeah, absolutely. Both defenses really establishing themselves early here. And I 
couple of guys back to uh, to re receive. Nyox has, I believe, a card both back for the right hole. Falls away. It's a short punt. And out of bounds. Brad, it'll be interesting to see how much the kicking game plays into this football game. So far, uh, not a great start for Edmonton punting or kicking the football. For right. a second consecutive drive, the rivals are going to establish themselves almost already in the field. Well, we're uh, in the friendly confines of the broadcast booth where uh, it's not nearly as windy. On the field, it's swirling, and uh, there definitely is a wind uh, prevailing towards, uh, I guess that would be the... Going from left to right on your broadcast screen. So Winnipeg with the wind at their backs, and their starting QB under center directs traffic, and it's a handoff. Mitchell Onga stacked up and the ninth seven. That was Roni Bahet. Excuse me for the presentation. Roni Bahet. running back. Throw into the flats there. Gang tackle.
Swedish back to pass. Withrow, looks like he's got the first down as well. First down a little bit more. That's the situation. Deep with the Wildcats need for a first down. Yeah, he gave up it's all way a little too much space. There. Exactly, gave up way too much space on that one. I mean, great job by Withrow knowing where the first down marker is. Just sat down at that first down marker, caught that pass. Another first down for the Wildcats. Wildcats marching now. Swedish lines up in the gun, calls for the ball. There, but that rifle feed line all over it again. Mature cow was in on that one. And a great job by that rifle defense to not get fooled by that jet sweep. Staying in their lanes. Richard McGuire making line. some noise down there as well, offensive lineman for Edmonton. Missed tackles. He's down to the 40, the 35 yard line. That was number 80, Grand and Repnord with the catch. And that's a situation where the rifles defender tried to go for the interception and just flat out missed on that one. And that's a read and react play where if you're going to go for that, you know, you, you know, if, just in case you missed that, that pass, but thought that they had a read on it. Ball a little bit high there over the head of 86. It's Donovan Hillary with the coverage on that play. And yeah, that ball was definitely a little bit too high from Swedish. Good coverage though on the play by Hillary as well. He, uh, that was a situation where Swedish had to sort of put it into a, a smaller pocket based on the coverage on the play from Hillary. 86 or could have been 85. Mackenzie Lawrence or Lawson. And this is a the intended receiver well. there. Edmonton trying to er, successfully moving the ball on this drive. A couple of misdirection plays and nothing doing there. A tremendous job I can by that rifle. Good speed. pressure. That's two separate times on this drive where the rifles haven't been fooled by multiple misdirections uh, off the line from Edmonton. Yeah. Come and just snuff that play out. Looks like uh, we'll take, uh, that could have been a objectionable conduct. I didn't quite see what the call was. Looks like intentional the flag came out late. It wasn't. It wasn't. And that, it, looks, it looked to me like the call was probably intentional. Yeah, grounding. intentional grounding. You're, you're correct on that. It just came out so late. I wasn't sure if maybe uh, some yeah. words were exchanged sure, from yeah, Winnipeg's side like of the ball. Five different defenders in the oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And that actually drives Edmonton out of field goal range with the penalty. So a big, uh, big penalty there from Sweden. They need a 15, no yards, no yards. Winnipeg at the 50, the 45, all the way down, continues and pushed out of bounds and tackled at the 20 yard line, at 10 yard line. Winnipeg rifles with phenomenal field position after a very successful uh, punt return there. Not, not by the, the design, but uh, it worked out. Absolutely, and we're going to go back to this probably all game. Like they do. 
nobody home. Maybe confusion on the completion of that route. There was a little bit of back and forth going on there. It almost looked like a little bit of contact from the Wildcats to the Huskies. Defensive back on that one, but they're completely defending in the area for the Wildcats on that one. Looking forward to that. yarder give or take so should be should be decent enough uh, for Gunnins to make this kick but obviously we'll have to see what happens here. Oh and it's blocked there. Didn't get enough height on that kick and I'm not sure if I'm not quite sure if the holder didn't set that one up properly for Bush. Very tense. So he's for him and, and he's talked about that in the past as being something that right positioning for Bush or if he just didn't get enough underneath it one way or the other stats will reflect that and uh, obviously I think his uh, execution right now is reflecting that as uh, he's able to make a uh, completion even though I think the ball was maybe a little bit behind. Absolutely. That was a great catch by Brandon Rednard. He had Cole's knee to be right in his
Offset, yeah, on that one. Yeah, we're in 15 on both sides, so just second down. because it's going to be a penalty offside. Good job there, uh, forcing the rifles offside with that uh, sort of uh, delayed snap there. Yeah. Interesting, I thought that was offside on the, on the rifle side. Indeed, there was movement from the offensive line. That will set up a second and long. Out to the flats here. Kicking and punting game, and the battle between It's pretty can capitalize here. Or Mitte, oh my goodness gracious, there's been a couple plays where Mitsuyango has, has, has gotten solid gains on uh, The Rebels have gone away from that a bit and going to the pass and on that play uh, uh, number, number 81 on the play which is uh, Dallas Opiola Again, on the far side of the field, so hard to tell who caught that ball for the rifles. Yes, like I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the numbers on the rifles jerseys not kind to two commentators. And it was enough for a first down, and a great job by the receiver there to sort of... I believe of that's their first first down. I believe it is, yes. And a great job there to sort of just catch that ball, maintain balance, and then move forward to that first down. It quite possibly was Luke McMillan, that slot back on the side. He's had a good start to the Zone lead option play here for Mitsuyango. Tries to find the edge and gains about five yards on that one. Tony Sabchuk knocked him out of bounds. 
I'm not going to complain with that, but there are two more flags on the ground once more. We yeah, maybe not necessary to run this. On Sawchuck there. It's Edmonton offside on the play. And again, we'll have to do this again. It'll be the last play of the first quarter. Last play of the first quarter brought to you by Super 8 West. Super 8 West bringing you the first quarter here for the Rifles. Hey, everything's wide open now. You can get a little bit excited here. Possibly some misdirection or maybe a jet sweep, something to sort of keep the uh, Edmonton defense on their toes. They're stacking the box here, it looks like. We'll see what happens. All those, all those linebackers drop off into coverage, but it's a completion. And that's Griffin Schillenford with his first catch of this football game. And it's interesting, you haven't heard his name till now, but like we mentioned in the pregame show, Griffin is a veteran receiver in his final year of CJFL eligibility. Right. He's got experience playing in U sports, so season pro for sure. For Knew sure. where the first down marker was. Yeah. Again, we talked about this with the Edmonton drive earlier where there's yeah. a big down. The awareness. The awareness, and caught that one, and that's going to be a fresh set of downs to start the second quarter for the Winnipeg Rifle. Second quarter brought to you by Murray, Chev, Morden, and Carmen. Located only about a 20 minutes drive from each other and about an hour from Winnipeg. Murray, Chev, or you could probably get like a, like a Chevrolet uh, HHR. Those are always really nice looking vehicles. I always thought that that's a really, really nice looking no vehicle. No complaints if you got one of those. Absolutely. A Chrysler, I guess that would have been like the PT Cruiser back in the day. It would have been, that yeah. Was, no one would have been to driving that thing. But... But by hook or by crook, we're going straight to the second quarter here. Couple, Fresh uh, set of downs for Winnipeg. Just a couple of notes from that first quarter. The, obviously, the, the standout offensive player from either team was uh, number 80 for the Edmonton Wildcats, Brandon Repnor, who's in his final year of eligibility. Hasn't uh, sort of uh, He's definitely showing that veteran presence here so far for the Wildcats. And both defenses played quite well. A standout play was that big hit from the card. Obviously, that sort of obviously it's, it's, that's a momentum shift for a team. You know, when you make a play like that, you get the Wildcats to see the big pass to the ball that play there. No yawks, directing traffic prior to moving a slot back from one side of the line to the other. There's a flag on the play. It looks like we might have a holding call, and we will move it back. It'll be second and long for Winnipeg as they play. They, they scrimmage from about midfield. Uh, this is a, a Rifles offensive line that has some veterans on it, but there are quite a few younger players. I mean, I've seen a little bit of that experience on here. There's been a couple of holding calls on that offensive line already. Second and 20 from the Winnipeg 49-yard line. Winnipeg will line up in the shotgun formation. Strong side safety's blitz. And that's another Griffin Schillingford. With another uh, reception, good for uh, about eight yards possibly, not even, uh, just, uh, just about not seven yards. And uh, it'll be uh, second and long again. Brendan Noyaks and Griffin Schillingford ran out patterns and Schillingford was the one that uh, Noyak saw in that play and, and gave it a skip. Down. Noyaks takes a look. The lefty connects. Tyler Hodgson with the catch. Hodgson they, they with the grab. They're hanging on over the middle with the veteran. Tremendous job catching that football. And uh, Tyler Hodgins, the guy he played for Grand Park in high school, was actually an exceptional quarterback. Uh, went to the came to the Rifles a couple of seasons ago, and has really uh, he's a tall, not the f uh, uh, great hands also. So. 
ready to all battle that play. Third and short here. I, I thought they would have had that first down, but. Close, but it uh, looks like. No, oh, this is going to be close as well. <laughs> Noyak almost looks like he was trying to push the quarterback. I think so. A little bit on this one. A little like ten another. buck going on there. Uh, doesn't get ca called too often, but it's a first down for Winnipeg. As uh, Griffin Chillingford uh, asking for a little, uh, asking for a little bit of amplitude uh, from the Winnipeg faithful. Winnipeg starting to march the ball a little bit. Back under center is Noyox looking for uh, most likely. A You've got Hodgson in a tight end for an extra blocker, and they run to that side of the field. A couple of yards from the defensive line uh, and front seven play there by the Wildcats. That's going to be a gain of probably only a couple. Looks like it's good for about three yards there. Winnipeg still establishing that run, still no score. 12 minutes left. That was zone coverage there by the Wildcats, and they knew the down and distance, Brad, and just sort of uh, <laughs> parked out there at the, <laughs> the first down marker, and, and that pass was incomplete. There was nobody open for Noyak on that one. That was a more of, yeah, just a, a good job in coverage, and not much that the quarterback for the Redskins could have done on that particular play. Absolutely. We'll see if, uh, yeah, again, we'll see what Bennett can do here. He'll probably get it close to the end zone. Uh, obviously, we'll have to wait and see here. Oh, boy. And I probably just jinxed him as that one went off the side of his foot. the wind at their back. Right. So obviously that I mean we're up here in the broadcast booth to try to how much uh, that plays back on the field but uh, certainly a little bit of running by Salan there and got the first down. And yet again, that's the veteran out there for the Wildcats, uh, the, the fifth year Brandon Rebnorn with his third catch of the game. Just saw him open basically immediately on that one running that route. It's going to be close to a first down here actually. Second and inches, basically. Expect to see either a QB sneak here or likely a handoff to the land on this one. And it is indeed a QB sneak. Looks like he's good enough for the first. There's a little bit of uh, fighting going down on down there on the pile. 
also, Donovan Hillary getting in, or, well, it wasn't really Donovan Hillary getting into it, it was the, the Wildcats uh, offensive lineman, 59, but uh, Mike Rhea getting into it with Hillary. It's, it's a couple times now where uh, uh, we're drawing the ire of the rifles coaching staff. Up out there a little Maybe not a productive way for the team, but no flags on that one. So first down for the Wildcats here. Another, another handoff, only good for about one. That's uh, Philan with the run and uh, stopped uh, just on the side of the original line of scrimmage. Krakowski, Justin Krakowski, a third year player for the Rifles, made that play. There were multiple Rifles defenders in on that one, though. Not much uh, there for Philan. A good job just to get a couple of yards on that play. Lining up now. Shot. Receivers out wide. Short by at least a yard and a half. That was a good job there again by Cole Sneesby. I think Karkowski was in on that one as well, but sort of maintaining his contain on that play and kept Swedish from getting the first down but it looks like uh, he's limping off the field here so that's uh, not what you want to see obviously if he's okay here for the Rifles. We haven't talked too much about Mikey Hart, another one of the linebackers for the Rifles in this game but he hasn't but have been in a couple of plays. Ball's out. And that was just a disaster from the very beginning for the Wildcats. Snap went over the head of the punter. Noah Perkins ends up with the ball and uh, then on his head. Indeed, it was Matura Cow who got in there to eventually uh, make the play. Plenty of penetration for the Rifles right off the hop there. They'll enjoy that. Uh, they'll enjoy that field position. Most definitely. Under center, hands it off. Matiango, good for about three yards there, maybe a little less. That's Robert Sarley, we talked about him a couple of times. He was uh, invited to the CFL regional combine this past year. Six foot four, two ninety back. It's a big guy. Absolutely. That's uh, uh, poundage wise right on par with uh, Doug Brown's final season and only about four inches short. So uh, he'll be a disturbance all game long. Absolutely. Looks like bringing some pressure. You got Mac, the middle linebacker, coming in on a blitz. Dalkey really, uh, that was almost a headshot by Dalkey on that play. Yeah, looking for the highlight reel hit and uh, almost connected on a pretty dangerous play. Nonetheless, that ball was caught in his first down. I believe it was Dallas Oviola who made the reception there. And we are seeing plenty of physicality in this first half, Brad. Absolutely, we are. This game of the season, you really want to set that tempo, and these teams are both fired up and obviously excited uh, to be back on the field for another year of football. Noyox under center, takes the ball. He'll hand off, and... Uh, that was Chopper Hickey that was in on that play. Basically, right away, wrapped up Mitiango. Again, one of those zone looks. Siango looking for some blocking to open up, but again, uh, great job setting Good for the about edge three edge. yards there. Yeah, yep. about three yards on that play. Good job setting the edge. Second and seven, ball on the 26 yard line of Edmonton. Just over six minutes to play here. Looks like we got a passing down on our edge. hands here. Mitiango st stays in to block. Ball's delivered. And that was a great catch there. Tony Savchuk making the tackle. But again, a tremendous job by the rifle receiver on that one to hold on. I believe it was Brendan Noyox. Brother to brother. Brother to brother connection. We've been waiting on that a little bit. And a 
again, that's a situation where Noyak knew where that first down marker was and just sat down in the hole and made the play. Savchuk sort of threw him down hard on that one again. Yeah, he did. Continue to see that down here from both secondaries. Keep the ball on the ground. Mitianga runs right into the teeth of the defense. He should be good for about four there. Winnipeg looking to run with a little bit more tempo as uh, quarterbacks coach Ryan Marsh giving the signals in. And I like the fact that uh, Winnipeg is continuing to establish that run. You know, they're yeah. not going away from it despite the fact that they haven't had a lot of success in the first half. Uh, just continuing to pound, uh, pound the rock because eventually that's going to pay off as, as uh, the other team, as Edmonton, gets tired. And likewise, on, uh, when Edmonton gets off. That pass is intercepted by Ty Smith. Ty Smith on the receiving end of that Noyuk's toss. Excellent coverage, read it, and uh, basically nullifies the threat here as uh, Winnipeg was in the red zone. That's a situation where you really see that inexperience from Noyuk. He didn't look off his first read. On that play, it was Griffin Schillingford. Blanket coverage by Ty Smith. Uh, probably should have just thrown that one away if his first seed wasn't open. Yeah. Instead, and he had space, too. He could have gone through a progression as well. Certainly. Instead of a field goal uh, or possibly a single, nothing for the rifles. And that could be a huge momentum shift. So we'll have to see. That's another reception for the fifth year vet, Brandon Rednor. Edmonton's had success on first down so far. Moving the ball, getting into that second and medium that uh, it's just manageable. You can open up the playbook and uh, still no points on the board proving that uh, Winnipeg showing up with that Brett Ben not break defense. They got some Smurfs back there. I would be looking, I would be looking possibly at uh, at some press coverage, some jam coverage to maybe negate those first, uh, you know, those, uh, five, six yard gains on first right. down on those out routes to left north. But again, with a bit of a shorter secondary, it's something where um, you don't really necessarily have that option as much. For sure, and of course, I only call them Smurfs because they're mostly wearing blue and they're far enough away from me that I can't, they can't hear me right now. Brad Gever, always the folkster. Every once in a while. We got another penalty on that play, negating that uh, first down yardage. Don't know if it was unnecessary roughness holding, but uh, nonetheless, uh, penalties are playing a massive factor here in this first half. Give him two yardage. That's uh, he shot up his own goal posts. We just delivered the football a little low, and there's going to be no catch there. He's looking for Braden Wick on that one, but yeah. This is something we've seen in the past with Swedish where he didn't necessarily get his feet set on that play. He was, uh, almost got a little excited that he saw his receiver open and he really didn't give his, uh, his wick a chance to do anything there yeah. because he was right at his, at his feet. So. so again, a chance for Edmonton to steal some momentum, but a penalty costs them a productive first down gain. And just like that, it's a two and out. And they're kicking from the shadow of their end zone and probably going to give up a single based on... Based on the last point of the game. Absolutely, based on the sort of uh, punting history we've seen in this game from uh, from this the Wildcats. This is true, this is true. A little bit. Trying to burn a little more of that clock off. And, uh, For reasons I'm not too sure. <laughs> it's a tie for the ball game in the second quarter. Brought to you by Murray Chevrolet. Morning and Carmen. Great job there by that rifle Stevens, but again, I think penalty.
again, like I said, you probably see a little bit of that like, inexperience because a lot of these penalties will come on either holding calls or unnecessary roughness. So that's just really about maintaining your composure and knowing what your what your job and your responsibility is. So uh, yeah, that'll happen at the start of the season, obviously in the first game here. I'm not just the shock to see see these kinds of flags that uh, go down here. Something that both teams will want to fix in the second half. Looks like a much better kick than we've seen previously. Ricard's going to feel that one. Ricard's running hard down into the teeth of the defense. Picks up a block, but then swarmed by a... Donovan Yaseka with the first one in on that play. A pack of Wildcats. A pack of Wildcats in on that one. Yaseka broke the wedge down quite well on that one. Uh, great job sort of getting there. Uh, and yeah, for the first time in a little while here, the, the, the rifles are not going to be set up past the 40 yard line now no, on first down. I enjoy that uh, field that position they've been enjoying so much, but uh, just a little bit of a challenge for them to move the ball. Moving into uh, just shy of the three minute warning here. Ball's out. Great coverage on the play there Very by Brady Kerr. There. That was just a. Uh, corner route ran by the veteran Nyok and Scott, excuse me, uh, Riley looking for his brother Brendan there, but that was blanket coverage and really would have had to have been a perfect pass and even if it was, I still don't you know. You would have had to throw was. him open there, that yeah. was uh, not a whole lot of uh, room for error and, uh, and Kirk just made a nice play there. Yeah, certainly. And again, look at the passing situation on the second long here for the Rifles. It's a three minute warning here in the first half and a so far, the two to nothing here for Winnipeg. Winnipeg with the only points on the board so far. Yeah. Calls for the ball. It's a passing situation. Steps up into the pocket, sails it just a bit high. Winnipeg will set the punt. And I think Noyak felt the pressure a little bit on that one. There was sure, two he's a happy feet there. Ha happy feet for sure. There was two defenders in the vicinity. He didn't want to throw an interception, which is why I think he threw it a little bit above. Uh, uh, Cole Chow in there, the intended receiver, and yeah, just good coverage and good pressure uh, by that Wildcats player. Not the most accurate pass in the world, but on the sa at the same point, also taking care of the football a little bit, keeping it out of the reach of the defenders that uh, so far have, uh, have grabbed one from so far. Definitely, and especially on that last drive where Noyak threw the interception, I think he was trying to play it safe there, knowing, <laughs> knowing that he tried to force the ball on that last drive. That one was nearly blocked. Nearly that blocked right, and a decent kick. That Wildcats return team. Solid field position, they'll basically be set up right at midfield right there. Mid yeah. A tremendous play call there on the jet sweep by the Wildcats. Whitrow, Whitrow with the carry, and he's good for at least eight, nine yards there. And that's the situation. Basically, and so I think the, uh, the case and uh, great. Short. They'll give it to Fallon. Fallon twisting and turning down to just shy of the 40 yard line. He needed about the 30, 39. So I think that's going to be. It's going to be close for sure. Good penetration the, from Justin Krakowski. But uh, if you're a hometown fan, you like to see that. I'll we'll have to see here. Down, but we'll have to wait and see. Possibly a measurement here, and we will have a measurement. And now, while we got a second, 
about uh, interception right uh, when the rifles were driving in the red zone taking points off the board but on that exact same drive Edmonton takes a costly penalty really a uh, situation where you really talk about momentum and just yep. how quickly you can shift in the football game oh it's been battle of the defenses so far and uh, accomplished so far for uh, minimizing uh uh, Mate Mitianga's uh, effectiveness so far, he's come off the field fresh. And uh, we, I, I look for them to try and get him going in the second half. I don't know if uh, that's close. It was almost, it looks like uh, Swedish may not have got that one. He might have gone on second effort there. A good penetration by that front four from the rifles. And it will be a 40 yard line. Down. And uh, with just under two minutes to play in the second quarter, the first half. Brought to you by Murray Chrysler, Morden, and Carmen. Directly following this quarter, we'll have the halftime show br brought to you by Ariel. Back to pass. Spin move down to about the five yard line, just inside the ten actually. What might have been uh, the running backs uh, stepping onto the backfield on that one. I think that was foul in there. I think it was foul. That play. I was running down the seam for the Wildcats was Zach Burgess, and he was also open as they found yeah, a couple takes of some time out here. Critical time out here. A couple, a couple of holes in that. Uh, Not starting the play clock or the time, the time at all. Still one minute fifty five seconds left in the half. It's been the Wildcats' best offensive drive of this football game, I would say. It's had a good combination of run and pass here. Moved the chains a couple of times, especially even on third and short, gotten a good push. So in terms of uh, driving the football, uh, I think the career team this is the oh, most successful. Holy yards has got to be. Given the fact that, uh, 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 except for maybe some uh, here and there, but uh, total offense, they've had bad field position and they've actually been threatening. This will be Edmonton now set up in the red zone. Plenty of options to play with here. We'll see if they do any sort of motion again. Braden Wick coming in on that jet sweep. They've been doing that quite a few times and had success with it on the one play. We do see a little bit of motion here again. Three receivers to the left side. He'll go to the right. Late flag on the play. Looks like some, uh, some contact downfield. Possible pass interference call here. And it is going to be illegal contact by the rifles. That'll put uh, half the distance to the goal, and it'll be first and goal. Some big boys check in for uh, for Edmonton, 61 and 66. Got the heavy package yeah, in here. They bring the noise. I think those guys. Uh, no doubt that they're eating well on this trip. It looks like the Wildcats are set up at about uh, I to say about the two or three yard line. So possibly uh, QB sneak here. Obviously they brought in a couple extra O linemen. So we'll see what the decision is. Almost a pistol formation there. Nothing Fallon doing for Fallon on that one. For a three or four yard loss. Winnipeg was all over that one. There were three or four rifles in on that one. It's Noah Wilson who ends up being the, the guy that stops that one ultimately. But a great job by the rifles uh, defense there, specifically that defensive line. Right off of the snap, getting penetration. It's going to be a loss of a couple of yards when all is said and done. Yeah, they'll re-scrimmage from the five-yard line. Still second goal. And a minute and 44, 44 left to go here. Trying to go into, uh, into the half. Up a few points here. Second quarter, 
second quarter brought to you by Murray Chevrolet, Morden Carmen. Directly following the second quarter, we'll have our halftime show from, uh, brought to you by Aerial Applicators. And I believe we're going to have a guest in studio. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have Brandon Urquioli in the studio, uh, second year running back for the Rifles. He's going to be of that sort of uh, three-headed monster that Rifles have in the backfield. And we're going to talk to him a little bit about how training camp went and just sort of, uh, yeah, what to, to expect from this Rifles offense and, uh, in uh, on, uh, this season. Edmonton looking to dial something up special here. First real crack at the way with some points, almost assured a uh, a field goal unless they taken down that they as uh, looks like they were actually maybe not. Never mind. Still they're on the five yard line. Everybody up on the sideline for Winnipeg, supporting their defense. Bringing in quite a few extra offensive linemen. And he gets stacked up. Nowhere to go. That's Donovan Hillary getting in on that one. Setting the tone on that play. That's a uh, situation where your best players have to be your best players, and he was able to um, get penetration, make the to the to the ground, and uh, now it's third down. And it uh, looks like they'll be kicking uh, a field goal. Certainly, and again, the rifles are very experienced in their front seven. Pretty much every player has a minimum of uh, three years of experience. And so when teams set up in in the red zone. Uh, against them. Uh, it's a situation they, they probably won't be panicking and that's a great example of that where Hillary made a great play. Obviously Noah Wilson was in on, uh, on another play, two fifth year uh, veterans for the right. Edmonton does get the field Zach goal. Zach Putters puts it through. Short, three short field goal. Wildcats with a minute 25 left to go in the first half. And again, like we mentioned, Basically, that was the longest drive of this entire sure, game. Absolutely, and it was. Huge momentum shift here for. And the key to that drive was that big play, obviously. Fallon taking the ball uh, down the sideline there, and he was able to uh, break off almost uh, 35 yards coming from midfield. And uh, that's. Uh, with the, after the field goal, Winnipeg electing to take it to the 35 yard line. High snap, ball is long. Doing that. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, Brad, I think that one's on Riley Nyox a little bit. Because Schillingford, I mean, well, first of all, it was overthrown, and Schillingford might have been able to make a play on that one, but right. the snap, well, the snap was a little bit high, and then Nyox bobbled it a little bit, and so he was on a rhythm there. And if it had been a clean snap and he had, would have been able to get into his drop, yeah. perhaps could have found Schillingford there, because he uh, Griffin does love to run uh, those go routes. going to be, I believe, Austin Klein. Klein checks in second and long, and uh, not a whole lot there. Ends up getting out to the outside, and uh, maybe a yard there total. What's the flag on the play, though? It's either going to be offside or receiver. And it's going to be offside it on is, the wildcat. Right. So it's going to be second and, second and five. Accomplished rifles quarterback in his own right. Oh boy! Connects with the pass and uh, his brother leaves. That's uh, the 85. That's Brendan Noyak with the catch. It was a little high and a big hit, and he sort of hurt the thud yeah, when Noyak made that catch. He doesn't look like he's 100% if he comes off the field. That was Brady Kerr that came in to make the play. Great catch, though, by Noyak. Tremendous job in this game, negating anything for Matthew Mitchell. 
I can read. Looking for That's Griffin Schultz 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 and he's got it. It's going to be a touchdown. Six points on the board and an amazing play from Schillingford who takes the ball off of his out route, extends his route, helps out his quarterback, takes the ball, dances down the sideline, and that'll be good for six for Woodhead. Now let's talk about a couple of things that happened on that play. First and foremost, you've got Tyler Hodgson coming in as an extra blocker there, and he did just enough to prevent that defender uh, for the Wildcats from coming in and getting to Riley Noya. When the team needed a big play, they looked to their fifth-year veteran. Brendan Noyox took a little bit of a hit, another veteran on this team. Griffin, I think, sort of in his mind, is thinking, i got to step up, i got to make a play, and that's exactly what he did. The first touchdown of the season. Do that convert. Yeah. I'm just gonna push him back five yards. Try to get the. Well, that's I probably. Penalty. I mean, there's 21 seconds to go in the first half. Brandon Bush is, is a good kicker. I mean, I don't think yeah. an extra five, ten yards is For sure, play. and I actually probably would have preferred that on the kickoff, uh, given the fact that uh, you know I'm sure you get some great field position and maybe uh, a nice return. Uh, with only 20 seconds to go, uh, you put yourself in a position and maybe you can try for the end zone. Dead the right foot will come to Congress for a second time here. 10 yard line. Snaps back, good hold, balls through. Maybe uh, banking on the uh, earlier attempt for the field goal that didn't quite make it past the line. Uh, there's a holding error on that particular play, so uh, maybe trying to key off of that, but uh, none doing. And uh, Winnipeg now stands atop. 9-3 with 21 seconds left in the first half. Yeah, you throw it right in the teeth of the defense here. You, you make them try and uh, smother the ball, give them maybe 15 seconds to play with, if that, and, uh, and, and, and hit into half with a six-point lead. That halftime show brought to you by Aerial Applicators. Get your field sprayed today. Which I think is their slogan. If, if it's not, it should be. And it is a, well, I guess technically that was a very Not good a bad kick. kick for the wind, and, uh, Again, but. I, I don't necessarily agree with that decision. Right. Because it really hung up there, and. It hung up, but also if you pooched it, it probably would have gone as quick, gone with a squib kick as sort of. Intentionally kicked it at one of the up backs or one of the up men. Yeah. Uh, you know, lesser chance of them doing anything with it. Some of the bigger yeah. blockers out there instead kicked it, it more to, or less uh, just fallen. Yeah, instead uh, gave it to one of the Wildcats returners, and they have the ball just uh, outside of the 50 yard line with 16 seconds left to play. Play back to Platt. Brendan played. There was good penetration from that right. 
delightful speed of the line, but also uh, to the ball inside on the intended receiver. And that's another situation where uh, Swedish didn't necessarily get his feet set. He had happy feet in the pocket there, and, and uh, that was, went a little bit. Left, Tyler Buchert checks in, 54. Yeah, I believe Cole Sleepy was injured earlier on. That might be why Buchert was checking in here. Yep. Uh, he's a big boy. Yeah, he is. And, uh, he's going to be a tremendous junior football Swing player. Swing pass. Fallon able to corral it. He goes up the sideline, unable to get out of bounds, though. That was a, a nice play call on that one, sort of on a, on a swing pass up there to Fallon. But, yeah, the clock not working in the Wildcats' favor. Though. Obviously, the Rifles' defense playing in a prevent situation there. And good job by Dominic Horvath to make the tackle there. Horvath with the tackle, and uh, it'll be one basically one play left. Uh, for um, oh, it looks like you go for a long drive, field yeah. goal, a very long field goal. Uh, to be perfectly 54 honest with you, yarder. I think Richardson being out there, uh, he should probably come up about five to ten. I don't necessarily know if the Wildcats kicker has the leg and he doesn't. So good decision here to have Richardson out. Uh, be, uh, sort of and a chance uh, for some offense here. Absolutely. Picking and weaving his way through. Is that Richards? That was Jake Richardson on the return, and that was an incredibly, well, it was a questionable decision by the Wildcats, let's call it. It was a risky play, you know, absolutely. You know Trying to make something happen before the half, but ill-advised. Uh, your kicker there, Zach Putters, doesn't necessarily have the greatest leg. You try him out at 50 and quite short, and uh, that's a situation where the Rifles could have possibly taken it for six, maybe if they had gone for, uh, you know, kind of tossed it back to Ricard there and, and tried to make something happen. But nonetheless, we we're going to go into the break. The score is 9-3 to three for the Winnipeg Rifles here. Stay tuned. We will have uh, Brandon Urquioli uh, of the Winnipeg Rifles, the second year running back, coming up uh, to chat in a little while. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rick Funk from Funk's Toyota. Our family has been in the automotive business for over 45 years. That's 45 plus years of looking after customers. We have a top worldwide recognized product that we are proud to be a partner with Toyota Canada. Every new and used vehicle is negotiable when it comes to purchasing your vehicle here at Funks Toyota. Our staff of many years is very knowledgeable and will help you, not force you with your buying decision. There are no hidden fees and no pressure tactics. Not only that, we promise what we deliver and have one of the best used vehicle warranties in the business. Our staff love to serve and you will feel like family after your first visit. We are not perfect, but we love to please here at Funks Toyota. For those of you that have experienced our Funks Toyota family way, please share it with others and like us and share us on Facebook. We are proud to be a sponsor of the Manitoba Amateur Sports. Visit us online at www.funks.toyota.ca. At Super 8 Winnipeg West, we have your comfort in mind with free Wi-Fi and free daily Superstart breakfast. We also have guest laundry facilities, a state-of-the-art fitness center, and a jetted hot tub. Sleep well in a spacious guest room equipped with a plush new bedding, a 50-inch flat-screen HD TV, microwave, mini refrigerator, and Keurig coffee maker. Or book a suite with a kitchen, ideal for extended stays. Super 8 Winnipeg West, located just inside the perimeter on Portage Avenue.
halftime with uh, Brandon Urquiel, the second year running back for the uh, Winnipeg Rifles. Uh, sustained an injury to his shoulder, so obviously not in this football game, but a vital part of this Winnipeg Rifles offense. First and foremost, uh, Brandon, let's just talk a little bit about how training camp went and uh, for this team and how you felt uh, going into your second year with the Rifles. Uh, went uh, really good, I thought. Uh, a lot of, like, again, uh, we have a lot of guys returning, uh, such on offense. So it's just you know getting down the plays and everything and uh, executing stuff the way it should be and you know if everyone does their job and execute it, we should be gaining yards, gaining touchdowns, and offense should be rolling. Let's talk a little bit about how that injury happened. Was it a practice injury or what happened? Uh, I can't remember exactly, but I just uh, won the play. It was during practice, I know for sure. One of the hits I took, I just I felt a little bit of a crunch in my shoulder. Still try to practice. Eventually, I sat out, sat it out, and. You know, after a few days, still try to practice, but it never got better. So went to get X-rays and found that it was worse than I thought it was. We're told it's a great because yeah. you, know, you have to be really patient. You can't mm -hmm. really do anything. You can't do any rehab for it. Uh, you just have to let it heal naturally. So I'm sure you've been in the gym and doing a lot of leg work to make yourself even more of a power back than you already are. Yeah. Putting in the time over at Elite Performance. Uh, yes, uh, uh, there I'll probably be going there next week but I've been going to Cheap Pegwis uh, there that's where I usually go to work out yeah yeah so a lot of just legs I can't do any upper body so I'm gonna just you know build up my strength build up my explosiveness yeah. and work again work on my speed keep you know not I'm not gonna let myself fall out of shape no I'm, I'm right. not gonna you know sit on the yeah, couch yeah. or anything I'm gonna try to better myself with this this extra time I have to work out and train absolutely and you should probably have uh, some fresh legs once it comes time exactly. to uh, put the pads on and some a bit of a feather in your cap something you can look forward to once you're able to rejoin your teammates yeah no i i agree like probably the next like days before i head back in the field i'll make sure to you know even get a massage or i'll make you know ice my legs that's what i'll probably end up doing when i get home yeah. tonight and yeah just better myself be ready yeah be ready exactly now in terms of your training leading into this season did it differ at all knowing that uh, Michael Rashad is gone, Odin's gone, and that you'll, you're going to see an increased workload this year? What was your mentality like, and how did you prepare for, for this season? Um, again, you know, like I knew la even last year, I knew I was coming into where there's two fifth year vets. The year before that, I was still working my butt off. But even this year, you know, just my understanding of workouts and stuff, and understand like, uh, like I got, I, I uh, gave myself. Uh, like I did a little more reading on what to do on being com becoming more uh, faster, explosion, uh, more explosive and stuff. And I really, really like perfected more of my workout and my type of style of running and such, and better myself that way for sure. So, yeah. Now, what's the relationship that you have with the fellow running backs on this team? Mate, Austin, yeah. being a veteran. Uh, yeah, what's the camaraderie like among that group? Uh, honestly, uh, we all love each other. We're all, they're we're a three-headed monster. They gotta get yeah, along. Not even, not even just them. Even some of the other boys, Mike, yeah. uh, Tristan, uh, Eric, and those guys. Like we're all, we're all you know, big running back family. You know, we all like push each other, make each other yeah. better, and you know, like we're, we're here for each other. You know, like I, I like Matt and Austin. You know, those those guys should be running more today. But I, I hope they like. I want them to do well. I want I want my boys to do well. And I mean, we're a team. You know, supporting each other here. For sure. So it's been frustrating so far for that pair. Um, Matt Tate, for the most part, getting stacked up quite a bit. That's got to uh, kind of get you a little bit antsy. You want to get in there and, and make a difference. Uh, so like maybe frustrating for him, maybe double frustrating for you, the fact that you're not able to contribute. Uh, speak to just like com coming back to uh, the, the lineup when, once you're able to get put pads on, go full go, and uh, eventually contribute to this offense. Uh, yeah, hopefully that's soon. I want to to get back up there and running again like you know obviously after after this game we're going to be looking at film uh and we're going to try to fix up those little things and i see a lot of like just little little things all, a lot of it's mental and you know once we perfect like no mental mistakes that's where we're going to take a rain next level of passing and everything so we're again we're going to look at the film and adjust from there well your season hasn't quite started yet but uh looking backward towards Just explosive. Uh, la I did drop. I did lose 15 pounds about that, and I, I was still able to keep all my. I, I upped everything for like you know PRs and my strength and everything, okay. and I, I, I lost quite a lot of weight too. About like down to 200 last by the end of last season, I was about 220 ish. 
So and even probably throughout this season, I'm gonna drop my weight even more. So again, I keep that speed, more explosiveness. And that's why I'm feet. lighter on my feet, but still have that, you know. Well, thanks so much, Brandon, for being with us at the halftime yeah. show. We hope you heal up quickly and get you out on the field as uh, soon as possible to be a big part of this offense this season. Yeah. All the best. Yeah, We're right back you. after this break. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you, guys. Hi, I'm Rick Funk from Funk's Toyota. Our family has been in the automotive business for over 45 years. That's 45 plus years of looking after customers. We have a top worldwide recognized product that we are proud to be a partner with Toyota Canada. Every new and used vehicle is negotiable when it comes to purchasing your vehicle here at Funks Toyota. Our staff of many years is very knowledgeable and will help you, not force you with your buying decision. There are no hidden fees and no pressure tactics. Not only that, we promise what we deliver and have one of the best used vehicle warranties in the business. Our staff love to serve and you will feel like family after your first visit. We are not perfect, but we love to please here at Funks Toyota. For those of you that have experienced our Funks Toyota family way, please share it with others and like us and share us on Facebook. We are proud to be a sponsor of the Manitoba Amateur Sports. Visit us online at www.funks.toyota.ca.
shy of heading back out onto the field for the second half here. And uh, shout out to the Fantasy Focus 06010. Um, love that the Fantasy Focus podcast. If you don't listen to it, you really should. I definitely do. I, Abs- love, it. I love it. Absolutely. And I'm, try- right and I'm trying to get into the man's league, so hopefully this works <laughs> out. But uh, uh, in all seriousness, we've got a great football game on our hands here. Uh, we've seen a defensive battle. That's why we've got uh, di- single digit points on both sides of the board so far. Winnipeg came up big in the, in the final minute of that last one. They ended up uh, going, going up 9-3. Uh, tell me how it all happened. So it's been veterans that have really set the tone on both sides. Brandon Rebnor has been the best receiver for either team in this game, a fifth-year player for the Wildcats, setting his team up with great field position on a couple of different situations. Uh, and for the Rifles, obviously Griffin Schillingford with the lone touchdown in this game on the final drive, a fifth-year receiver, sort of seeing that his quarterback was rolling under the pocket and scrambling a little bit, adjusted his route, uh, saw himself open a little bit there, and caught the, caught the ball and scored. So a couple of veteran players really getting it done for uh, on both sides of the field. Right. Penalties have been really costly for both teams as well and I think the best example of that was when the rifles were driving uh, uh, and an interception was thrown by Riley Nyox but then on the ensuing drive Edmonton with a chance to switch momentum they get a positive yeah. first down gain it's negated by a holding penalty they shot themselves in the foot see two points there and that really sort of took the wind out of Edmonton sales I think a little bit they did a great job uh, both teams did a great job right at the end of the first half sort of yeah, managing the clock yeah definitely so it'll be interesting to see if uh, they can both continue that momentum carrying into the second half but it's definitely gonna be uh, exciting to see and it's been a tight contest on both sides and really looking forward to seeing what adjustments were, were made at halftime by both coaching staffs entering the second half absolutely and I fully expect uh, the rifles to continue to establish that running game commit to it and they ha- they will continue to do that all season long. That's why they want to play football. But uh, throughout the second half, how does Riley Noyaks blow the roof off the doors? Well, like you just said, uh, Brad, he has to. St- the offense has to establish that run first. Obviously, Edmonton is sta- uh, stacking the box a little bit, and it's been hard to uh, to get the run game going with Mate. But uh, if they can do that, then it gives Riley uh, the opportunity to be successful. I thought that he played a pretty good first half. There was a couple situations, including the interception, where he. Definitely didn't he didn't look off his first read and and that's uh, just a young inexperienced quarterback making uh, a bad decision. But there have been a couple of other plays where he's sort of seen the field a little bit and the more comfort that uh, Noyox gets in this game, uh, obviously the uh, the more success this this offense is going to have. And again, I think he needs to lean on some of those veteran receivers. He needs to lean on his brother Brendan Noyox. He needs yeah. to lean on Griffin Schillingford, uh, Carter Chowan. Uh, plenty of uh, veterans uh, in that receiving core that the Rifles can lean on to make plays and, uh, and to help out their young quarterback. So. Well, it looks like we're about to get going here on the MB Sports Network. Uh, first game of the Rifles season that we're broadcasting. Uh, thank you so uh, much for joining us on the, the halftime show. And uh, we'll be right back after these messages in the third quarter brought to you by Wentworth Ag. Rifle set to receive here. Long towering kick. I bobbled, but then eventually corralled. 
scrimmage from about the 35-yard line. Decent field position as uh, they tried to establish the offense. Griffin Schillingford and the rest of the Nyox on the return and the fact that he bobbled that ball actually worked out in his favor because it gave yeah. the uh, the kick return team an opportunity to set up their blocks a little bit. So um, sometimes you know bobbling a uh, a bobbling as, a return ends up working out for as you. As far as going bad, it went well. <laughs> That's uh, exactly right, Brad. In the third quarter, brought to you by Core Fitness. Watch out for the Core Fitness Show coming this fall on the MB Sports Network. Nyox making some adjustments he's under center it's a it's a handoff directly forward and nothing doing for Mitianga who uh, just runs into the teeth of defense and uh, comes up with nothing again we've been saying it all game long Brad it's just that penetration from the front four from the Wildcats continues to be a factor in this game if I'm Winnipeg, I might try doing some misdirection plays, maybe, uh, you know, doing uh, or even sort of switching things up a little bit with some with a toss play or something. Get Mate out in space a little bit. Obviously, he's a between the tackles runner, but it would be nice to sort of see him and flash that speed a bit. So we'll see if they try to switch that up or if they continue with that uh, inside run game. Surprised not to see. Uh Kacha Solari. Kacha Solari out there. Yeah, he's, not out there to start this uh, series. He didn't start the first half either. He comes in in certain packages uh, for this team. So not too much of a surprise on that front. But uh, we'll definitely see him in here at some point. He's I can physically see him standing on the sideline yes. ready to come into the game. So He, just, he, he showed up rather late. Possibly uh, some adjustments. Maybe uh, an ex some extra taping going on. I want to give a shout out to there as well though for the Wildcats he's had a really really good game uh, has a, done a tremendous job setting the edge for Edmonton and the rifles making a substitution here I know I believe nope, that is oh excuse me Ronnie uh, oh, I'm looking at the right about that that's Matthew Jarrett coming into the game Matthew Jarrett checking in at the right guard spot Mate Sianga needs to, someone needs to get off the field, I'm thinking. A little bit of confusion out there. Uh, the rifle sideline, uh, a lot of yelling going on there. And uh, maybe. A little bit of a discussion with Ryan Marsh here. And Brad, you've mentioned it a couple of times. Ryan Marsh is the guy that's seen his fair share of games in the Junior yeah, Football yeah. League. He's One very business-like the way he conducts himself on the absolutely. field. Absolutely. And one of the best quarterbacks in the history of the Winnipeg Rifles. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. He had, uh, I think, two stints uh, with him throughout his, uh, his tenure. And uh, a guy that can still chuck the pigskin and uh, now chooses to uh, use his wisdom uh, to pass on to uh, the younger generation. And uh, that's to the benefit of young Riley Noyucks. Yeah. We have a guy with that much uh, experience in the game, and uh, you know, calming the guy, calming, calming Riley's nerves maybe a bit, but also just uh, being able to lean on him for advice. Be uh, an asset on uh, the entire offense. Really, he 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 knows the what the receivers need to be doing. He knows what the running backs need to be doing. So uh, multiple benefits. Uh, no good there. Uh, he, Mate definitely felt some footsteps on that yeah. play. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tony Savchuk was coming in on that play, uh, and he was about to lay the boom down. Mate. Uh, I'm actually surprised you didn't follow through with it. <laughs> Just a little bit. Obviously, I think with uh, some of the penalties we saw in the first half, trying to avoid an unnecessary roughness call there. But uh, yeah, Mate uh, heard footsteps and uh, didn't have full control of that ball. Uh, was looking upfield before he had it, so. Uh, tough situation. I don't think he would have got the first down. Anyhow, it was a little bit uh, well, well, well short, but nonetheless, it'll be Drennan Bush back to punt. Towering punt. A little bit short. High so in no the air, but not a lot of here. A high punt into the air, but not a lot of distance. You'll have a, uh, a five yards, no yards call. Go over. At midfield, Winnipeg will have to dig deep here. 
Yeah, absolutely. But again, this is a team that's proven in the first half, at least, that uh, they can get it done defensively. Uh, but yeah, absolutely great starting field position. Field. Back to pass. Looks long. And it's a reception. Incomplete, actually, on that play. Oh. It originally looked like it was caught. Great air under that ball by yeah. Swedish. But uh, just a tremendous draw by the Rifles defender to sort of stick his hand in there at the last second and cause that uh, pass to go incomplete. Under the lights here at the Mustangs main field. Looks like it was Troy Wilson, I believe, that was in on that one. The only home game that uh, the Rifles will play on grass all uh, all season long. A little bit of a change up for the footwear, I imagine, but uh, otherwise, uh, all systems go here. Swedish steps up. He had some. Uh, he heard footsteps and some happy feet, resulting in a, in a throw right to the shoe tops and uh, a, a quick two and out. Uh, the ever-present Andrew Ricard in on that one to knock it away, uh, playing in his at his safety position. He reminds me a little bit of Taylor Loeffler, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Okay. Just with his ability to uh, commit downhill, make some heavy hits, uh, but is also a, a good cover guy. So uh, definitely somebody that you enjoy having back there at the safety position and uh, cause that one to go incomplete. Does he also wear too much eye black? <laughs> you know what? Actually, he, he, he does wear a little bit. So All right, fair there enough. Might, there might be. More similarities not, than you may know. He does not have a mullet, though. Okay, well, that that's uh, there's mullets are few and far between <laughs> as uh, a five yards, no yards uh, call. will add a little bit to this run, but it uh, looks like Winnipeg will scrimmage from the 45-yard line of their own. And that's another short kick from... Uh, uh, putters, excuse me, for the wild. Zach Putters, uh, not able to connect the way he'd like to, coming off the field each time. A little bit disappointed with his performances so far. Yeah, again, like that, we've talked about this many times, but the kicking game can have a huge factor. If you're starting from midfield almost every single time that you have the ball offensively, even if you don't score any points, you're at least setting up uh, the opposition in a situation where they're starting deep in their own end. So the kicking game can play a huge factor. And in a game like it almost becomes even more important. Four receivers out wide. It's a swing pass. That one was a little bit underthrown. You want to try and get your receiver sort of on a bubble screen, uh, sort of catch him in stride. That was Austin Klein who caught that ball. Savchuk on the... On, Savchuk, on, the ever-present Tony yeah. Savchuk making the tackle. Almost, well, he almost tripped him unintentionally on that play. But, uh, yeah, that's a situation where if you're... Uh, the quarterback in that situation, Noyox, you, you want to sort of catch a receiver in stride. He threw it right. a little behind him, didn't give Klein much of a chance to to operate there. And we're seeing uh, both running backs now out on the field for the Rifles and Mitiango and Klein in the shotgun formation. And Brad, let's see if that's something they, they go uh, go to in the second half here more often to sort of confuse yeah. that Edmonton defense a bit by putting in uh, that veteran and Klein as well as the, the, the power back in, in Mitiango. Two incomplete passes, sorry, as a one in, one completion uh, for negative yardage and an incompletion resulting in uh, in a quick two and out. Uh, both defenses continuing to uh, stand tall and uh, some uh, some, some sputtering offenses. To be honest, uh, uh, poor, poor execution on uh, both both parts for both offenses so far. The offensive line, uh, you know, protection broke down a little bit there for the rifles, and that ball actually went off the helmet of one of the linemen. And that's another sort of pooched kick. This time it's Bush. And again, the kicking game continues to be a factor here as the Wildcats are going to set up close to the 50-yard line. It's the second time in this game, Brad, we've seen a kick go sort of off the side of Drennan's foot, I believe, right. a little bit. Uh, first, first game jitters a little bit, maybe. Um, maybe the, that strategy that uh, he told you about with the shoes not working out the way he might have planned, but uh, either way, a fresh set of downs for the Wildcats who uh, set up in the shotgun. Now, the, the Rifles do have a couple other kickers on their roster. They've got Adam Godfrey, Dallas Opiola can also kick. So, I mean, if they do want to make a substitution there, they can. Uh, Donovan Hillary stepping up and making a play there. 
Again, tremendous job by that front seven from the rifles. Again, stuffing the Wildcats running back in the backfield as both teams continue to try and establish the run in this game. Three receivers lined up wide side of the field. Swedish calls for the ball. Little, I think there was an offside call in there. Free play. Oh, and boy. That's one that what should have been Richardson is going to want back. That one basically hit him in the shoulder pad. And yeah. I think he was thinking six before he was Yeah, he was thinking about the highlight reel ball. long before uh, the ball was secured. But uh, unfortunately, I think that's why the number two plays on defense. Yeah, there's a there's a common uh, sort of joke that goes around that yeah. DBs play DB because they can't catch. That's right. Uh, you know that they're not receivers. That's certainly why I did. <laughs> Me too, actually. If we're being honest, nonetheless, uh, got a lot of love for Jake Richardson. We shouted him out earlier as being a you know one of basically the smallest DB they have at five seven, but yeah. one of if not the most aggressive. Well, Andrew Picard very aggressive as well, but plays one with of the chip on his shoulder and does play with the chip on his shoulder for sure. Second and five, balls out. It's long, and Richardson got Richardson an opportunity. two opportunities and as many. Uh, perhaps if he had drank his milk as a kid, he would have been able to snare that one, but uh, unable to, and uh, that will be uh, two and out and another punting situation. I like the effort there by Richardson Absolutely. on that second play because that one was clearly overthrown. And he, you know, he dove at that ball and almost caught it. So I'm sure, I'm sure he had in the back of his mind that drop pick from the last yeah. play. So another punting situation here with the ball in the air off the side of the foot a little bit. That'll it's Noyox 15 again. yard no yards play. Noyox has a lot of room here. Noyox with some real estate, and it looks like. The five, the ten, the, ten, the five, touchdown, the touchdown. Baby. Punt return, touchdown for Noyox. No laundry on the field. There's a flag. It's the, be that, for no yards. The, the no yards call is the only flag on the field, and that'll be a big six points in a pivotal play here early in the second half. Third quarter brought to you by Core Fitness. That's a massive play, Brad. I mean... Special teams is definitely playing a huge factor in this game, and once more, it comes into effect. The veteran, Brendan Noyox, he took a huge hit in the first half, came coming back here and setting the tempo early in the second half. Tremendous job seeing. He sort of cut, he went to the right originally, then sort of cut back to the left. Cross grain, yeah. Absolutely. Saw that the defense was committing to go into that right side, switched it up, got some blocks downfield. Tremendous job by that special teams unit. And that's going to be uh, now, a with the convert, a 13-point lead for the Rifles. Holders losing the glove for the hold. Good penetration there as uh, there's more than one Wildcat that was uh, pawing at that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> at the point after attempt we've seen some good pressure from the Wildcats in this game in terms of getting to uh, almost getting to the punter and getting to the kicker but yeah they just got their paws on the football on that one uh, maybe they thought it was a ball of yarn or something like that but no <laughs> such luck the ball goes through and it's 16-3 here on the MB Sports Network I am a company man we'll throw it to commercial right quick as they set up for the kickoff Out here, kick return by the Wildcats. Looking to make some special team magic of their own. A decent return all the way up to the 45 yard line. Decent field position for the Wildcats to uh, get things going. Uh, they haven't been successful so far uh, in the second half. This third quarter brought to you by Core Fitness. I am a company man. 
And um, yeah, I, I think uh, Swedish needs to uh, connect here. He needs to start marching uh, his troops down the field. But uh, Donovan Hillary, Dono, and the rest of the boys will have something to say about it. Most definitely. Uh, Edmonton coming out here. Uh, two, uh, two receivers on one side, one to the left, now motioning to a trips formation to the right side, short side of the field. But it is going to be a run play here. And getting to the edge, wow, for about half a second there, uh, was the Wildcats running back on that one. That was Fallon, who uh, ends up uh, seeing contact to it. Uh, 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 an attempt at a spin move ends up putting himself on the ground, uh, a gain of about two there. It'll be, uh, it'll be second and eight. That was a great job by uh, Dominic Horvath, the cornerback, uh, keeping contained on that play. Yeah. Uh, Fallon beat the first defender, but he had Horvath right there to uh, stop him on that play. So obviously, as a cornerback, uh, your key responsibility in the run is to is to uh, make sure that you contain the edge. Yeah. Because if the running back gets the edge on you, really, there's yeah. there's nobody else back there minus the safety if he's drifted to that side of the field. So. That's, uh, that's actually kind of like a, almost a, not a, uh, a thankless job, but it's one of those things where if he's not there, uh, it's a big play and it goes for a lot of yards. Um, so uh, like um, something that gets sh stopped short, maybe not as uh, exaggerated as uh, it would have been if, if he's not there. So good on him for staying, staying home and, uh, and committing to the run. We do have an injury on the field here as the Edmonton player comes off. As a former cornerback myself, yeah, it's definitely one of those things where even it, so a lot of times you don't actually make the play as the corner, but if you if you keep contained, if you're funneling things into the inside, yeah, you then the linebacker is there yeah. to, to make the play. But unfortunately, if you're trying to get scouted or recruited, no. you know it doesn't really show up on tape aside from I set I kept the edge type situation. But again, good play there by the. Uh, Shotgun formation here for Swedish, and he's Looks got like all he's got kinds of pressure, but he gets away. He's sneaky, cat-like reflexes from that Wildcat who ends up delivering a pass across midfield and uh, get out of some pressure and deliver a football that uh, in the early portion of that that play looked like he was going to be snared. And that was, Bra uh, <coughs> excuse me, that was Braden Wicht who caught that one. He's had a big uh, influence on this game as well. But that one's really all Swedish. Yeah. He had four defenders in his face. Uh, just kept his composure there, got on side of the pocket, gave his receiver more time to find space, and uh, got the first down. So good job there by the 50-year quarterback. Swedish calls for the ball. It's a running play. Twisted into the ground. Possibly uh, a face mask uh, being called by the, uh, the referees on the Wildcats side. Andrea side linebacker making the play on that one haven't called his number too many times in this game but he's a key part of that uh, linebacking core for the rifles and made a, a big play there wrapped up the running back and really nothing to do nowhere to go on that one just a great job of sort of uh, keeping contain again there and just following the running back second down and eight once again lined up in the shotgun three receivers out to the left Running back stays in to block, and he's needed because there's some serious pressure and a hold. They'll take that sack, though. That's going to be Mature Cow, I believe, getting in there for the sack. But there was plenty of pressure from that rifle's front four. Basically, the entire defensive line got in on that one. Oh, they were... As, uh, they, were they brought the pressure, and they... Uh, all game long so far. And the late play coming out here again also. I'm not too sure about that. I think maybe a, a flag no, just got drifted tossed out of the and pocket, yeah, right. drifted out of the rip street's pocket and he was able to pick that back up. Yeah, but, again, uh, just a tremendous play uh, yeah. from both front fours so far in this game. But um, first sack we've seen, interestingly enough. So yeah. that really sp to uh, scramble under pressure lines. and the offensive lines to uh, sort of keep things going for their quarterbacks enough. Low snap and a, Another a high kick. punt, but uh, not the length that they're looking for out of bounds. Actually, it's uh, almost the best you could hope for there because you're not going to get a no yards call. Uh, Winnipeg will get started, get things started from the left hash mark on the 30 yard.
that actually is probably one of Putter's best uh, punts in this game. It seriously is. He went uh, like he had himself about uh, 15 yards behind the original line of scrimmage and ends up uh, a, a net punt of, of about 30 yards, uh, which doesn't sound long, but uh, based on a few of his punts today, uh, he struggled. But uh, Winnipeg looking to uh, make some offense happen here. Um, they've got the one offensive touchdown and uh, looking to add to it. Back to pass. Noyuk stepping up, and now we've got two sacks in the game. Speaking of pressure, we were yeah. just talking about the fact that the Wildcats hadn't gotten to Noyuk, and maybe we jinxed them there. As yeah, I think it's just a defense answering uh, to uh, the, the the successes of uh, the Rifles' defense. Those guys see uh, the Rifles getting into the backfield, and uh, those guys are inspired to go do the same themselves. And uh, now we're looking, uh, looks like maybe not like a sack per se. We got back to the original line of scrimmage. Either way, uh, getting to the quarterback and minimizing damage. I would almost consider that a coverage sack by the Wildcats. Uh, there was no receivers open on that play, and Nyox kind of just had to get what he could there. Ball long, uh, no receiver in the zip code, but uh, a quick two and out for uh, the Winnipeg Rifles, who uh, were unable to move the football on that on that series. And again, good coverage by that Wildcats secondary there. There wasn't really anyone open, and in that play, Nyack's the closest uh, player to that ball. Two closest players were actually Wildcat defenders, so. as my uh, is hit by a nasty uh, set of allergies here yeah, in the I have third to, quarter. <clears throat> excuse me, I have to apologize. Uh, the, the smoke coming from the BC wildfires is really getting to my allergies in the third quarter, so any coughs you hear are unintentionally coming from me. A holding call, maybe an illegal block on that return. Maybe a couple of uh, infractions on the play as... Uh, flags down in different areas. Second one coming out late might be some sort of uh, objectionable conduct penalty uh, of the legs as we see a couple of uh, a little bit of jaw jacking back and forth between uh, <laughs> the, punter, the punter John and Bush excuse me and uh, one of the Wildcats defenders. Uh, punters can have a chip on their shoulder. Uh, we, we had a pretty uh, we've had a pretty spirited uh, kicker here in uh, Winnipeg for a long period of time. On Bush, but uh, like I said, third quarter brought to you by Core Fitness. Look out for the show coming this fall on the MB Sports Network. I'm just sorting out the penalties here. We'll be first down. And it looks like it's going to work out in the rifle's favor. Yeah, they're going to push this one back. I think that's an illegal block uh, yeah. at the spot of the foul, which was right, right around where the, uh, the ball was originally. Uh, scooped up. So Edmonton will scrimmage from their own 40 yard line, 35 yard line. Here under the lights, St. Patel Community Center in Winnipeg, Manitoba. First game of this season for the Rifles. Back to pass is Swedish. Swedish, a little high, a little long. And uh, unable to get under it was eight. That's uh, Withrow. Jake Withrow has had a pretty decent game. He's had he snared some passes, um, but uh, that one was just a little bit out of his reach. And Withrow had a step on the rifle secondary there, but again, not really enough time for Swedish to get that ball to him, and also really not enough room to fit that right. one in either. I don't think Swedish uh, completely uh, set his feet on that one either. Maybe if he would have been able to put a little bit more air into that ball and put it into a spot, he would have been uh, more accurate with that one. But uh, puts it on a frozen rope, and it was a little bit too long for Withrow. We've seen that a couple times uh, in this game from Swedish. Just, uh, yeah, almost a little bit too yeah, much Pushing the ball a little ball, bit, yeah. yeah. Needs to be a little more patient back there, but you'll find that from a, a quarterback experiencing their first full season. Uh, of course, last year getting a lot of playing time. Swedish getting in. Sorry to cut you off there. Noah Wilson at the end of that play, uh, as there was a flag called, and Wilson. Swedish. That's just a play where, especially for That's your, advice. Especially coming from your quarterback, your uh, leader, 
your leader on offense, you yeah. really don't want to be seeing that kind of thing. Should Noah Wilson have held off? I mean, the play was over. Yeah, absolutely. But did Swedish need to push him? Most definitely not. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a game of con controlled aggression, and that uh, not the case as now uh, in the shadow of their own goalposts. Edmonton will scrimmage. Especially, especially on second down where you're is that looking. Lightning? That, there is a little bit of lightning in the distance, yes. Uh, hopefully it doesn't affect this game, but um, we'll keep, you guys, keep uh, the viewers updated as uh, the Wildcats go for a second uh, second down handoff, and there are four flags out on the field. At these, uh, as these two a graduation ceremony more than a football <laughs> uh, play. Uh, as many as four infractions, there are maybe a flag for uh, uh, all of them. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we saw that a little bit in the first half. Both teams laid some big hits on uh, both the, both defenders laying some big hits on uh, opposing offensive players. And the tempers have really flared up here in the second half early on. And we'll have to see who this goes against. Obviously, all the refs saw the same thing as four flags came out at the exact same time. But we also have an injured Edmonton Wildcat down. I'm not entirely sure who that is. And we, like I said, we do have a little bit of lightning off in the distance. They were calling for. Thunder showers late uh, today, uh, which we are getting into the, the, the wee hours of uh, the evening here. Um, it's got to be getting close to what is it, 9 o'clock. Uh, central time here. Uh, we'll keep you updated on that. It was, a, it was a small chance of thunder showers, but we got some pretty, uh, pretty dark clouds off to the west, so uh, we'll keep you posted on that. But um, yeah, some, some penalties, and I think that resulted in a, in a first down for it happened they in didn't move the ball forward and a fresh set of downs. So there must have been some somebody must have hit someone else down after the play was over. There must must have been uh, like a you know a swing one way from a, from a rifles player. I don't know who it was, but again, Swedish takes a costly penalty earlier in this drive. Now the rifles take a costly penalty themselves when they should have been off the field. And we'll see if uh, the Wildcats can turn this into a critical uh, momentum shift here with 5:15 left to go in the third quarter. We've got an injured Edmonton Wildcat player now coming off the field, and it is their feature back, it looks like. And it is. Yeah, that's the 33 of Fallon, so they'll need uh, someone to come in and replace him. Uh, maybe one of the 45 running backs that they brought from Alberta. Um, literally the entire lineup uh, can play running back. It's uh, it's a pretty wild setup that they have there. Yeah, they, they have uh, there not a ton of veterans uh, at the running back position, so... That was one area where head coach Darcy Park and his team certainly recruited in the offseason was uh, at that running back position. Um, we see now uh, coming off of the field now, fortunately, is, uh, is the running back. I'm hoping for all the best for Fallon here. But nonetheless, we're back in game action. Back, back out there, and uh, not a lot of running room for the new running back. We'll try to pull a name off of, uh, or pull a number off that uh, that jersey. And the 22 checks in. I believe that is a running back. That's Dustin Pollock. Dustin looks, might have been uh, Donovan Yasako that ran that, uh, that last one. Been uh, Braden Chilbeck that was in that last run. I think 22 is in there now. Pollock, the lone setback. Back to pass. To passing down. Elusive, but not quite enough. He's taken down as he tries to scramble out, and uh, Swedish hits the deck. I'm going to keep uh, let, let you know that the Winnipeg Rifles are proudly supported by Home Run Sports CT Rentals VP. Vipond, as well as uh, Centennial Wire, Beaver Bus Lines, Pratt's, Ladco, Lawson Consulting, as well as uh, Elite Performance, the only training, training uh, facility for the Winnipeg Rifles. They do an amazing job there with uh, speed camp, strength conditioning, the whole nine yards, and they also supply the uh, athletic trainers um, Jason Sangha and the rest of the uh, the ATs for the rifles all supplied through uh, 
elite performance and a punt here. Decent kick. It's collected and uh, swarmed. And that's Ricard on the return there. Flag on the play as well. Either going to be a hold or no yards. And again, once more, Winnipeg is going to be set up close to midfield here as the kicking game continues to be a factor. Oh, it's been the story of the game so far. It's The, it, the, the field position uh, has basically been played between the 30s uh, for, for, both, uh, for both teams. Most team, both teams not really getting be able to get into field goal range other than they're just scoring touchdowns. So um, Winnipeg looking to uh, produce something on offense, and it looks like they're getting marched back here as well. Uh, likely uh, a block in the back or a hold of some kind here on the rifles. It was an illegal block that was called. Got rifles are also su proudly supported by Wellington Atlas Private Wealth and Pinnacle Staffing Solutions, of course, uh, uh, former Winnipeg Blue Bomber Wade Miller, a huge portion of the uh, Pinnacle Staffing Solutions, and uh, also uh, one of the founding members of Elite Performance. So uh, Wade's got his hands on just about everything. On, to on top of that, the three three of those uh, proud sponsors um, are uh, are Wade Miller. Uh, he's got his hands all over those. Certainly, and again, like as mentioned earlier, the Rifles do have a great working relationship with uh, the Blue Bombers. So possible to see some future bombers Ball here. in the air. Tremendous play by Tony Savchuk on that one. That was veteran on veteran. Straight up one-on-one -on, -one on a go route there. Schillingford had an opportunity of that ball tremendously placed yep. by Riley Noyox. But Savchuk uh, saw the ball. He sort of saw the ball coming in and right at the last second just knocked it out of Schillingford's hands. That's basically textbook from the veteran, the fourth year halfback playing arguably the hardest uh, position in the secondary uh, at the field. And there's Miteango. Miteango finally ripping off a decent sized run. 10 yards for his troubles and a, and a first down. He'll move the chains and uh, getting him going. He's got to be going upwards of 20 touches so far in this game. And that was a nice little spin move. Great job maintaining his balance. Five, six yards, enough for a first down. So we've seen Mitayango use that physicality a little bit. And now we're seeing him main, uh, sort of with a little bit of that uh, uh, sort of slice and dice style. A little bit. In a move like that, you can get kind of tall when, uh, when making a move like that. But he was able to keep his pads low. And now he looks for a little bit of space on the corner. Looks Found like a little bit of hold there, though. Probably a hold that's coming back. Good job there, though, again, by Mitsuyago to maintain his patience and found a little bit of a seam bursting upfield for about five yards, but this should be coming back. Field, and I think that's a third uh, Wildcat that's come down uh, with an injury in the second half. The uh, inclement weather uh, on its way. It looks like uh, things have actually calmed down a little bit on the field level, a little bit less wind than we were experiencing earlier in the game. Uh, which could very well mean that we've got some uh, uh, some serious weather patterns coming through. But uh, for right now, um, not a whole lot of wind out there on the field right now. Most here, Brad, a little bit to our right. Um, pretty Stays out of range for long enough for this game to finish. And we hear the Edmonton coaching staff making a note that Matte is not in the game now. Well, they're going to keep track of him all game long. Obviously, that's critical. I mean, he's a huge part of the, that Rifles offense. When he's in the game, you have to know where he is at all times. And that's not to say that you don't need to know where Austin Klein is. He's a, a tremendous back as well. But obviously, Matte's been getting... He's been getting the most of the run, yeah. Definitely... Uh, He'd be an RB1 if he was uh, in fantasy football with the uh, fantasy focus 0610. Absolutely, and he's coming back into the game now. Just mass confusion so far. I, I don't uh, know what the thought the play process here. was there uh, for the rifles if they're trying to confuse Edmonton, or if it was just straight up Jordy was Jordy Wilson was trying to just tell his running back something that that might have been the situation. But there was an injury. There has been for quite some time. 
which gave the rifles the opportunity to sub, uh, or not sub, but to sort of go talk to their head coach a little bit. And Jordy giving a little bit uh, of uh, two footage to his second year running back there. PA announcers electing to go with the Austin Powers theme for the in game entertainment. Questionable. We're going to hear a lot this season. Fair enough. Just making sure that I'm on the same page. Yeah. Well, was, my ears are affected, and that's what's important here. Uh, as we're continuing with the injury timeout, set to get going with uh, oh, 237, not about 237, exactly 237, left in the third quarter, brought to you by Core Fitness. Look out for the core fitness show the fitness show on mb sports network this fall low snap back to pass hurried throw and uh, slightly off the mark unable to connect with the target noyox felt the pressure from the back side there he was looking for luke mcmillan on that play but again, a good job there from uh, that edmonton wildcats defensive line and just didn't have enough time to get it to mcmillan it was also thrown inside so not much of the receiver can do on that one. Things looking awfully dark to the west as uh, those clouds continue to get a little bit closer. I haven't seen a whole lot more lightning, but we'll keep you in the loop on that. Four receivers out to the right side, but it's a run. And Mitianga runs it right up the middle for a 10-yard gain. That's second down, though. Only back to the original line of scrimmage. I like it. If you're on defense here, you're expecting some sort of passing play. Defense set up probably in a cover three or cover four prevent defense. So I start, sort of setting up that pass by going in shotgun formation, but then drawing that defense uh, off a little bit with a draw play. I, I like the call. Obviously, Mate didn't get the first down, but he got a solid chunk of yardage back and uh, gives the, the has, excuse me gives me the gives the rifles. A little bit better field position for this punt. Nice snap and uh, corralled on the on the ground. Forty-five yard line. The Wildcats will take over on offense, and it's. No, oh, it's been back and forth, uh, as, like the battle of the defenses. Did not expect this uh, with both teams having their offensive firepower that they do have. Both defenses flexing their muscles all game long. With that being said, Brad, I don't think it's too much of a surprise to see that the Rifles defense is uh, has to stay in the most group and really all over the field, but especially in that front seven, you really see that veteran presence. Screen Looks like a pass screen here. pass here. It is the secondary from Winnipeg who are able to smother that. That was Jacob Nicolaides on that one. Goodness gracious, say that five times fast. No thanks. <laughs> Short gain on that one. Again, second and nine. Good job of contained there by uh, the secondary of the rifles. Three receivers out wide side of the field. Passing situation here. Drops back, and he's got a couple of rifles in his face. And yet again, we see that pressure. A huge factor all game long for the rifles, and that is Dono, Donovan Hillary getting in there, causing that one to go incomplete, knocked it down, and obviously celebrated a little that bit. That was afterwards. a pop, yeah, yeah. absolutely. He, uh, he made his presence felt, and uh, uh, if you ask the starting quarterback, uh, Justin Swedish, he probably would uh, let you know that that truck had some, uh, some extra mile an hour on it uh, when it came into, uh, into his lane. But, um, yeah, another, th another punting situation into the wind here. And uh, Winnipeg looking to get a good field position here. Uh, they'll, they'll accept the ball right around their own 40-yard line. Driven backwards a little bit. Looks like the ball goes out of bounds. 30, right around the 32-yard line, that ball goes out of bounds. 
Winnipeg will take over on offense, see if No Yucks can uh, drive them up the field. I gotta be honest, uh, I think we've been making a mistake with the, uh, with the kick. I believe it's actually Rosario uh, Cam Camamura that's been kicking. That's a number, an uh, incorrect number that's been provided by the Wild. Rookie. Uh, time in a couple years ago. Made it. Punter slash kicker on their roster. Empty backfield here. The lefty goes to deliver the ball to no one. Great protection by that offensive line. Uh, tremendous pocket for Noyox on that one. But unfortunately, the coverage was even better by the Wildcats secondary, and nobody opened. And we're sort of seeing that theme here in the third quarter. Good pressure from both front, uh, fronts, and also tremendous coverage in the secondary. Really the only uh, big play we've seen here. Uh, in the second half so far has been that kick return touchdown. The punt return touchdown, yeah. No, uh, it's, uh, that's been the that's the been the only offense and that's been the uh that's been the, the big seven points on the board for Winnipeg in the second half. He's got uh someone in his face early on this one and uh a couple of Wildcats had a had a, a better crack at it uh than uh, the seven of that was Schillingford that, that was Schillingford, yeah. There. But again, that was a situation where Noyox did not look off his receiver. Obviously, there's a trust factor there with the veteran Schillingford who has a touchdown reception in this game. But again, there was two Wildcats defenders right in Schillingford's face, and, and that was a play where he probably should have looked elsewhere. And you sort of see the two of them talking, uh, Griffin Schillingford and Riley Noyox on that one, just discussing sort of maybe uh, areas of improvement on that particular play. Oh, yeah, always room for improvement. This is the first game of the year after all as uh, the third quarter has come to a close and now the fourth quarter brought to you by Wentworth Ag and uh, this is not a scratch and sniff broadcast but I'll let you know that there is rain in the air uh, you can definitely smell that and uh, um, that's uh, that's going to be something that the, uh, the players are going to have to deal with in the third, fourth quarter I believe yeah absolutely we continue to see I mean the sky is getting darker by the second yeah. here I mean I it is also becoming nighttime though the sun has gone down you are right about that thank you for that astute observation Brad um, nonetheless we are seeing that lightning creep up a little in the distance but I gotta be honest I think it's probably gonna be I don't think it's gonna be a factor in this game uh, hopefully hopefully <laughs> I mean, not and, and hopefully with uh, technology furthering itself year by year that we will one day have scratch and sniff broadcasts a man can dream, Brad. Another punting situation for Winnipeg. A call for the ball and send this thing long. Yeah, Great I kick. I believe somebody was offside on that play as there was a flag came out absolutely immediately. Plenty of rifles defenders ran on that one. And there's some jaw jacking going back and forth. Oh, again. yeah. This time it's Schilling for... Tempers flare. Schilling for getting... Does this continue? Lots of attitude out there. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. I mean, it's what to expect, really, Brad. It's the first game of the season. You want to set the tempo. You, know, you want to make sure that you get off on the right... ...for the rest of your squad, so... It's just negating those penalties you don't need to take after the fact. You know, just walk to your sideline. There's, yeah. What are you really accomplishing by going and getting in the face of somebody on the other team? It's it, it's not it's not the detriment of of, of your squad. And At the same time, these are very young athletes. Tempers. It happens at this level. It happens at this level. So keep that in check. Is to the benefit of your team. Uh, but uh, good, good to see the, the uh, rifles playing with passion on top of that. Uh, as long as you don't go over the line. That's, uh, three receivers set up the wide side of the field. Formation for Swedish. Play action. He's oh boy! Justin Kodkowski. Kodkowski with the interception right into his belly. Now. Brad, one, that's going to be an uh, objection of conduct on one of the two teams, as we just talked about, yeah, not taking dumb penalties. Yep. That is another example of a dumb penalty. For sure. 
But let's talk about the interception for a second. Once again, the rifle front four getting pressure on Swedish. Panicked a little bit. We saw Swedish take a, 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 a grounding ball. I don't know either. Certainly tr wasn't trying to turn into the belly of Kwiatkowski there. And to be perfectly honest, I think Kwiatkowski was just the right place for the time on that one. But going back, going back to Swedish for a second, we saw him take a, a grounding penalty in the first half in a very similar situation where he had four guys in his face and he just tried to throw it down. This time he tried to do the same thing, but he got to his hair on it. And Kwiatkowski is the benefactor of what is likely something you will not see very often, an interception by a defensive lineman. Fortunately, it looks like the rifles are being set back 15 here. It must have been uh, an, an, an objectional conduct or unnecessary roughness penalty on the rifles. It might have been after the fact on a celebration from Kwiatkowski. Oh, interesting. Maybe a late hit on the quarterback. That's really the only thing I could think of. Brought to you by Wentworth Egg. That was things are just going all over. That was a the sponsor here, plug. Man. I never thought I'd have to be able to weave in, but I did it anyway. As we uh, get everything settled here, uh, and it will be Winnipeg uh, under center with uh, Riley Noyuk's uh, directing traffic, getting his uh, troops set, and to make sure everyone gets up to the line of scrimmage. And uh, Winnipeg will take over here, and a big and a big hole. Tremendous blocking up front for Mate Midviango there. And again, Brad, we've talked about this all game yeah. long. Just keep feeding the beast. Yeah, there keep was. On getting the ball in his hands. He's going to get comfortable. He's starting to see those lanes open up a bit more. That time, he took that hand off, saw the hole immediately, did not hesitate, burst up the field for a first down. For sure. And it's been a grinding game. 63. For the viewers at home wondering. Uh, for the rifles. No change in score since uh, earlier in the first half where uh, a punt return was re taken back for a touchdown and a successful convert on that. And that was another solid first down carry for Mithiango. Oh yeah, these you can start driving that. some Mack trucks through some of these holes that uh, the the uh, the big boys up front are uh, developing for uh, Mate and, um, and and he's the benefit of it. This is a huge momentum shift, obviously. I mean, we talked about that TSN turning point, probably that punt return touchdown. But MB Sports Nadia. Network turning point. You're right. Absolutely. I am a company man. And uh, we've uh, we've got a, uh, a stoppage of play here for a... Uh, Another Edmonton uh, wildcat yeah, play. Yeah, they nicked up a little bit. Good thing they half. brought 15 running backs with them. We'll throw it to commercial bank right here on the MB Sports Network. This fourth quarter brought to you by Wentworth Egg. Audio Jungle. Empty back set right over the middle. Looks like uh, Griffin Schillingford with the catch there, I think. Uh, my, yeah, I believe it was uh, Schillingford with a. Oh, excuse me, no, that wasn't Schillingford on the reception. I believe it was. 81 yeah, is so uh, Obiola, Obiola with the catch. He's been uh, he's been quiet as have uh, the majority of the uh, the rifles' offense so far. But they're moving the ball right now. They've got the first and ten. Mitianga slashing game. through. He's got uh, he's got about five yards there moving the ball. Got about six yards, second and four, open up the playbook. Likely going Hail Mary on this one. Nope. Playbook is wide open, Zach. Yeah, That's hey, really it's right. in there. There's a designated play when you need it. Back to pass once again. 
Looking end zone, and it's going to be intercepted. He floats that That's ball Tony in there. That's Tony Savchuk with the interception, and we've heard him all game long. Yeah. Big hits, tremendous coverage, and now an interception. He's a difference maker on their defense, and uh, yeah, he, he intercepts that ball in the end zone, and... Uh, that's a that's a that's a turnover that uh, you don't like to see a young quarterback make uh, a little bit too much air into that football, uh, but uh, the right idea going for the end zone uh, and the jugular here in the fourth quarter. Uh, Brad, that's the second uh, red zone interception that Nyoc has thrown, or close to the red zone, where at, le at the very least the Vikings could have come up with three points, and that's a throw that Nyoc really would like to have back. He didn't get enough underneath it, and. Really, it wasn't a very difficult play for Savchuk to make because his coverage is really good on that play. Pollock with the run there. He ends up right into the teeth of the defense and nothing doing. Uh, not a whole lot of running room for him, and it'll be a, uh, a long second and seven. That front seven continues to be a factor for the Rifles. This defense has given up very little in the second half. Oh, for sure. They've been in disturbance all night long, especially in the second half, where uh, I think that fitness is really starting to show. Well, there's a first down for the Wildcats. Looks like it's a uh, 50 year veteran. And Rebnod making the catch. And yeah. Uh, We've seen four Wildcats players go down in the second half. Right. And perhaps it has to do a little bit with uh, you know, the level of uh, cardio or fitness Fatigue, level. absolutely. Things come in, you get cramps, you're, you're not uh, making sound decisions on the football field, and that results in injuries. Two backs in the backfield. Falls out. And no catch. The 18 of Jeremy Amiss. Jeremy Amiss, who is listed as a defensive back, grabbing that football. He's also uh, spends a little time on the offensive side of the ball, apparently. That, and uh, that play went amiss. It did. It did go amiss. Um, it's a bad joke. I, I make I those types of jokes. Part. Yeah, I absolutely. You're you're, you're so keeping up your end of the deal. Um, but that was an out route that uh, just. Ended up a little bit short, second and ten, as uh, Swedish, all kinds of pressure. He can't get rid of the football that time. He's swallowed up, and it'll be third and a whole bunch as uh, that's, that's Wildcats. Wilson getting in on the sack. Yeah. He's been ever present in this football game. Uh, I want to talk just quickly about that prior play also. Again, Swedish, he had uh, miss open on that play originally, but he was looking to the other side of the field. And right. Then, uh, Obviously went to his second, third, uh, Developed a little bit too slowly. And uh, underthrew it a bit. It's a long throw, by the way. You're on You're on that hash Very mark. Simple. You're throwing the football almost 30 yards to gain five. Noah Wilson, just, we talked about him a little bit just in terms of his background. Uh, you know, he was on this team for a couple of seasons and then uh, went to a leadership position at U of M. And I think that helps with uh, when you're on the field, too. Just uh, being away from the game gives you that that opportunity to sort of realize how much you love it and that, to get that passion back. You know, he said that, uh, you know, football is obviously his first love. So uh, to, when you're away from the game and you come back, obviously back out there. And he says this is the best he's ever felt in his career. And it's showing tonight. Good to hear that. You want a full bill of health and you want to be able to be firing in all cylinders for the first game of the season, this being exactly that, first home game and first game for the Rifles for the 2018 season here at the St. Patel Mustangs Community Center. Noyuk's under center, drops back and, and hands off. Mitianga, good for at least five yards there. He continued to churn his legs after the original contact almost had him stop somewhere near the line of scrimmage. He ends up getting five out of it. Brad, Mate just did from when he was on the ground, he just or excuse me. 
flip yourself up mm -hmm. from on the ground. Yes. Showing that he is not tired whatsoever. No. And it continues to show here in the second half. He's continued to get stronger and stronger with every single carry. And I expect that the rifles are going to continue to just feed keep him feeding him. Absolutely. Give this guy the opportunity. Make good vision on that play. I think that was originally supposed to go a little bit out wider than it originally was, and uh, he was able to crack that thing off a little bit more between the tackles. Runs downhill, and uh, looks like he's got a first down there. Great job there. As you said, it was originally a, a zone replay to the outside. Tiago saw there wasn't much there. One cut, went up, knew exactly where he wanted to go, and got a first down. Winnipeg is marching here, threatening eight minutes, 20 seconds to go. 16-3. Winnipeg currently leading this one. Fourth quarter brought to you by Wentworth Ag. I would just continue to run the ball with Matt Dye and tell him to Yeah, control the clock here. And yeah, like the, the, the longer this drive goes, the more tired that front seven from uh, Edmonton gets and uh, you just keep uh, barreling that beast back at them and uh, that's exactly what they're doing breaking off uh, th four, three or four yards every single time and that was Mitiago again on the carry a bit better uh, uh, sort of contain on that one by the front seven of the Wildcats only a couple yards on that play a lot of hands on hips out there for uh, Edmonton some fatigue coming into things it was getting into the, uh, the late stages of the game. It's been a long drive so far. I believe this is the sixth play of this drive already. Can we talk about it? Earlier, not sort of being in the game at the start of the second half, and he's been standing on the sidelines for pretty much this entire drive. We haven't yeah. seen him that much. I, like you mentioned, I don't know if he's injured or, or what's going on, but in terms of uh, sort of negating the, the positive gain, uh, gains on first down by Mate, uh, that's a guy you'd like to have in there. Scott Berzik. Berzik ch checks in, but it uh, looks like Winnipeg's going to go for a field goal. So a different alignment, and uh, uh, Fallon ends up checking back in after uh, uh, an injury, having him out of the game for a little bit of time. So he's nice back to in see there. him back in this game. You never yeah. want to see a guy go down. You always want to see a guy injury. return. As Winnipeg looks to increase their lead, stretching it to 19 to three, a 16-point lead would be uh, awfully nice. Two full touchdowns and two-point conversions with uh, just over seven minutes to go would be awfully nice. We'll see if they can a good field goal here. Balls on the tee. Looks like the paparazzi got that one. Off the distance, uh, flash bulbs going off as uh, making contact, and uh and yeah, again we talked about this earlier. Jen and Bush, he's been a kicker for you know a decent amount of time now, and uses those soccer cleats, those very tight soccer cleats to yeah. to kick with, and we saw him miss a field goal or the uh, botched hold. Whether he just didn't get all of it, who knows? But uh, that was a solid kick, had plenty of depth on it, and. Uh, Increases the rifles lead here. Wildcats take over on the 35 yard line, immediately make the difference, and that is Withrow with the catch and a. Th Cole looks Sneezy like looked a little lost on that one, the linebacker in coverage on that play. Um, didn't really seem to have his feet set too much there, and the ball sort of dipped right past him. Through receivers out, wa out wide side of the field as uh, looks like it was a, a tipped ball. More than a couple of chances. <laughs> um, but uh, Wildcats going uh, hurry up here, trying to get as many plays as they can in. They uh, they need to make some offense because they're running out of time here. Now, I'm not sure if a defensive lineman got his hand on that one or if it went off of a helmet or something. It did something. go off of a helmet, I saw. Off of a yeah. helmet, but Ricard looked like he had the best chance at intercepting that ball, but I thought he was going to have it behind himself. Of course, that was unintentional, but uh, could have been a big play there. A miss split out wide. 
and there's that pressure by the rifles oh. defensive line once again and as this game goes on this winnipeg defense looks to be continuing that veteran defensive line making their presence felt oh they're controlling the line of scrimmage right now and uh Justin Swedish is running for his life this fourth quarter. Uh, he hasn't ha been able to set his feet. He hasn't been able to progress through his reads, and uh, that's got to be frustrating for him. Uh, on the other side of the ball, though, uh, Winnipeg being successful. They'll be, uh, they'll be pretty happy with their performance so far, uh, looking to continue that on to a uh, possible victory here. And that was a great job by Cole Sneesby. Uh, there was great, pre great penetration by that Rifles defensive in for the sack and uh, I kind of threw him under the bus earlier in the drive with not really knowing where he was on the coverage play. You he, did do that, yeah. He made up for it there with uh, with a sack. So Perhaps he's listening live on YouTube, which is of course where you can watch uh, the MB Sports Network as well as our, our Facebook feed. Some sort of a uh, uh, illegal uh, broadcast in the uh, the helmet uh, with his cell phone or something like that, listening to the docile tones of Mike Still and Brad Gebhardt up here in the booth. In this, this fourth quarter, brought to you by Wentworth Egg, as a nice bolt of lightning flies across your screen, just in the background. Uh, that lightning is getting closer and closer. It is absolutely, <laughs> and uh, we got um, five five left to go. Five twenty one. 19-3, uh, and um, as far as uh, the, the, the offense is concerned for um, Edmonton, I, I, they haven't really been able to come up with much other than that field goal, and uh, that's really got to say something for, uh, for Winnipeg. You're going to be happy walking away from this one tonight. Definitely, and, and that's not really unexpected. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast just how many veteran experienced players this Rifles defense has. Obviously led by 50 years like Donovan Hillary and Andrew Ricard. Plenty of veterans on that defensive line as well. Hayden Nellis and, and Noah Wilson, Justin Kwiatkowski, all of them having tremendous games. Cole Sneesby, a linebacker. So plenty of rifles getting it done. It hasn't yeah. just been one player. It's been a full it's unit effort. It's been a team effort for sure. Rifle offense looking to get a first down here. Second and long. Mitianga stays into block, but uh, a little bit too late on the uh, awareness, and uh, Edmonton able to get in there and uh, make something happen. That's a sack, and uh, Winnipeg will be punting with 4.22 left in the third, fourth quarter. Wildcats, there wasn't anything open there, uh, and Noyak's out of the park back in court for the Wildcats. And that was uh, actually Ben Davidge, the linebacker, getting into that sack. So uh, good job there by the entire Wildcats defense. Excellent kick. Look at that thing fly deep into the night here. and uh, But it looks like a decent return. That was oh. his best hunt of this game, but probably also for the Last return for their, uh, the Wildcats. They'll line themselves up on the left hash mark. Just inside the four minute mark of the fourth quarter brought to you by Wentworth Ag. This, this is the MB Sports Network. Booted by color analyst Mike Still. Amen. Mustard. Unable to complete the pass, and uh, that'll bring up second down. In pretty into three, three down territory here. Absolutely in three down territory. He's left to play in this game, and if you're the Wildcats, you definitely need to be uh, thinking pass here. But you know, obviously, if, if you're Winnipeg, you can you can definitely come in with a blitz here. You can, well, you can switch up your coverages a little bit for sure. They send four though, and then still get the still get the to uh, get the but uh, just a little bit too far ahead of him. To That's another example where I'm surprised I think to see them punting here. Yeah, three and a half minutes to go. Um, 
desperation isn't at the highest level for the Wildcats. If it was me personally, I'm sure just as yourself, Brad, you probably would punch it away. Excuse me, we'd go for it on third down. Oh, but sure. Nonetheless, they, uh, we just heard actually Rifle State Coach Jordy Wilson mentioned to his team possibility and uh, very legitimate possibilities. One of the outbacks was saying fake. It is a fake. And there is nowhere to go. Oh, and a big hit to the punter. You don't want to see the punter uh, running into contact. Uh, rifles uh, snuff that out, and it'll be a turnover on downs. Spinning on you, Glenn. Yep. All right, Jordy Wilson called that out right from the get-go. Uh, the special teams unit for the rifles knew it was coming, and when you're, uh, you can't really expect your punter from like 15 yards back. To try and make something happen with 12 guys that know that he he's going to be getting the ball. The short side of the field, which is more uh, surprising than anything else when you go to space, uh, but uh, possibly something that needs to be reviewed in film. Uh, a big run now. And that's Mate 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 double Ten M. Yards. They call him Shaka Zulu, and another big gain there for Mitiango. Finally met by Jaden. At yeah, least in the quiet. second half specifically. He's been quiet, you're right. And they're gonna they're gonna continue. Well, sec, there was a nine yard gain, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, and uh, I I would bet they uh, they feed the beast one more time. I think you're right. getting going here as a whistle blown for the three minute warning and we've got Tyler Hodgson lining up at fullback as well but it is going to be Noyox taking this one. Noyox with the drive forward he gets that first down a fresh set of downs and uh, now if you're Edmonton uh, you're looking at that uh, that third down play and, uh, and maybe thinking that uh, Maybe, maybe we should have uh, passed it on that play rather than uh, the, the fake punt there. I think it's a couple of things in that situation. First of all, as a coordinator, I think you need to have confidence in your quarterback I to be so able too. to make yeah. a play there. Swedish has been with this team for a couple of, well, for well, in his fifth year. Yeah. You know, you, you got to lean on the, Half decade. Uh, on the quarterback there for sure. Um, but that they are, and uh, with just under 2.30 to play, 19-3, to Winnipeg rifles over the Edmonton Wildcats as uh, Winnipeg continues to just pound that football right down the middle. And close to five yards again for Mitiango on that run play as he continues to just... Well, he's got to be up over 100 yards now. Close to it, it's almost single-handed. And again, a little bit of a delay getting the play in here. Or excuse me, getting the ball snapped. And Mitsiango again. And great pen, great push by that offensive line. And Mitsiango continuing to keep his feet moving there. Brad, the it, looks like he's getting, work there. it looks like he's getting fresher and fresher every time he carries the ball. For sure. I think uh, there, there very well could be a possibility of him having another game after this or something like that. Or it was, At least he'd wish there was because... Uh, the fourth quarter, um, he'll be uh, he'll be he'll be keen to celebrate after after this one as uh, Winnipeg looking good to uh, complete the first victory of uh, the 2018 season. Definitely, and I think you just see the rifles run the ball for the rest of this game. There's no reason to Why pass here. You're up by two scores. There's less than two minutes to go. Um, just keep giving it to Mate here. He's obviously the most, I would say, the the freshest player uh, on this offense. Well, and, and you know he's enjoying this portion of the game because uh, earlier uh, earlier today he was stopped. He, he was very frustrated throughout the first half, and uh, Edmonton had an answer for him, but they kept feeding him. They didn't go away from him. The, the coaching staff had uh, faith in his ability, and uh, the fact that if you keep keep giving that kid the rock, he's going to make something special happen, and, uh, and exactly that. He's led this team to uh, a, very, uh, a very good finish so far. As uh, Jason Sanger himself at the AT uh, 
team from elite performance out to a 10 to, I think that's the 57. I believe that's the center that's down. Is that the center? On the sideline, so definitely the rifle center that's down. My it's the 52 that's going to check in. That's Mac Lilly on the St. Paul's. Rookie, uh, coming out of a pro-style offense, obviously St. Paul's, the uh, po perennial powerhouse in Division I football in uh, Winnipeg. And, and Mac Lilly really says something that as a rookie, he's already sort of established himself as, as a backup and as a player that's going to travel with this team. And he'll see his first action, but you never want to see a starter go down, and, and especially in this case. Uh, yeah, late in the game. And I believe in this case it is the veteran. For the Winnipeg Rifles here with 132 left to play. And running off the field under his own power, that's always nice to see. Look at that stride from Sanger as well, that's great. <laughs> Looks like he's been training with the team there. Yeah, absolutely. That guy takes pride in his work. you got to stay fit to work with athletes. Under center once more. And why not give the kid the rock one more time? Still twisting and turning. It's uh, not a huge gain whatsoever as my papers go flying late in the fourth quarter. Brought to you by Wentworth Egg. But uh, looks like a uh, possible field goal try. Yeah, I would assume that they would probably go for the field goal here. There's no reason to do anything otherwise. And I'd like to talk about that last play quickly again. Mate was stopped in the backfield, but again, he just kept his legs moving like he's done all game long. And despite the fact that he was mad at for his contact, he did gain a couple of yards, kept him churning, and continues to show how uh, fresh he is in this football game. Certainly the fitness and the speed on showcase, of course, Glenn Bruce in the speed aspect and uh, the fitness that can only be found over at Elite Performance uh, is what uh, Matte is enjoying right now as uh, basically has his, w uh, has his way with uh, the, the Edmonton defense. And uh, that's also a, uh, a special nod to the big boys up front opening up those holes that uh, you could probably park my truck in right now. It's pretty good. Yeah, shout out to Glenn Bruce, the legendary Glenn Bruce, longtime Canadian sprint coach uh, and has obviously uh, paved the way for many running backs over many decades uh, forming into the players that they are, not just running backs, but football players in general. Um, I actually had the pleasure of being coached by Glenn Bruce in high school at Grand Park and uh, now work he works at Elite Performance, helping, helping these players uh, get to their peak level in terms of their speed. And yeah, Matt, as you mentioned uh, as well, Brad, tremendous blocking up front by the uh, for opening up many holes. Brody Jones, obviously, KJ Whitaker, another player in there that's. Uh, We will remind you that uh, with the closing stages of this game, uh, we will be broadcasting the second home game of the Rifles schedule. And uh, I think that goes down. We don't have that with us at this current moment. I believe it's the, the weekend Next of the weekend. second. It'll it's the weekend Sunday. of the second. It will be the weekend of the second on a Sunday. Yes, yeah. yeah, the Labor Day long weekend, the Sunday. Uh, we will have that game for you broadcast from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers Stadium, IGF, which is uh, basically the permanent home for the Rifles. Uh, they play their first game here on the grass, friendly confines of St. Patel Mustangs Community Center. And uh, again, because uh, they've been successful. They certainly have. Five days a week at St. Patel Mustangs Field, so they're very familiar with the confines here as Swedish is back to pass. Uh, incomplete there, and Justin Swedish really not his greatest. Uh, he's uh, also he's been forced to throw a lot of balls that yes, maybe he wasn't absolutely. comfortable with too. Like the throwing the ball when you're you haven't been successful with it, but that's the only option right now to get yourself back in the football game. And uh, but he's had some good plays today. Oh, for sure, and uh, obviously his best receiver has been the. Brandon Rebnord, but we haven't heard really anything from him in the second half as the Rifles secondary has done a great job containing him as well as the rest of 
the Wildcats receivers uh, and also tremendous pressure from that front seven. So almost, I don't, obviously not a perfect game for the Rifles on defense, but for a first game, about as close as you're going to get in oh, terms for sure. of uh, execution. The one thing you want to limit is all the penalties. That's yep. the biggest thing I think you got to take away from this game if you're the Rifles. Yep. And, and sort of uh, keep the, uh, just keep your composure. And really that uh, down to one play, which was uh, Fallon coming down the, the sideline to receive a pass. It's a 35-yard game that, that brings uh, Edmonton within the 10-yard line. Uh, the goal line defense able to stand tall and uh, and keep the Wildcats out of the goal of the the end zone, but it results in a f awarded to them on on this game with 29 seconds left. Uh, it's been a spirited affair, and uh, we thank you for joining us uh, live on YouTube as well as Facebook. This this fourth quarter brought to you by Wentworth Ag, and uh, we hopefully you'll join us for our second broadcast, which is on the 2nd of August, or August, September, coming up, the September long weekend, where this looks bad on both of us right now, that's fine. I don't have uh, that particular piece of information handy. I blame no. our producer. <laughs> I want to talk quickly, Brad, about that goal line stand by the Winnipeg Rifles defense. We talked about those three points, and it could have been seven easily. The Wildcats were set up at the two-yard line, and two consecutive plays by that Wilson, and then one by Wildcats from getting seven, and really it was a humongous, uh, there was a couple momentum shifts in this game. One was the touchdown return in the second half on the punt return by Ben Nyox, but I think that that goal line stand also uh, gave this Rifles defense a lot of momentum uh, because they then went on to score uh, the first touchdown of the game uh, later on that same half. And with that, the final gun and a win for the Winnipeg Rifles. They are victorious in their first week action here. Thank you so much for joining myself, Brad Gebhardt, and in the booth with me, Mike Still on the MB Sports Network, mbsportsnetwork.ca, as well as uh, YouTube and Facebook. Thank you again for joining us. We'll be back on the second to do another broadcast. We hope you'll join us then. For now, for myself, Brad Gebhardt, and Mike Still, thanks again.